What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. I say this all the time. Uh, please uh, like it on the YouTube, subscribe it, leave a comment for the Al Go Rhythm. It always helps us out, and we do appreciate all the love. Uh, try to bring you uh, as many fun episodes as I possibly can every single Friday. Hit that notification bell so you know, but we post every single Friday, so you know. You know. Uh, this week is Sam Morell. I love this dude. Very funny. Uh, a great comic who's put out multiple specials on YouTube for your free enjoyment, which I think is incredible. And also right now, he's got a documentary that's out uh, also on YouTube. Uh, so you can go find it on his page. Sam Morell um, is continuing to kill it. And he's going to put out another special he talks about uh, hopefully soon. So the dude is a machine. Happy to have him on the show. He's on tour. Go see him. I'm on tour. Come see me, my friends. AndrewSantino.com. 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 I can't reiterate enough. I'm going everywhere, okay, all over the place. Um, I'm going to be, uh, right now, I'm in Boston. So if you're in Boston, hey, what's up? Come say what's up. Uh, at the end of the month, Halloween weekend, I'm going to be in San Francisco. Then I begin the madness. I'm doing Grand Rapids. I'm doing Atlanta. I'm doing Philly and Seattle and Portland, which we've added dates, uh, late dates to all that stuff. Munhall, Columbus, Cancun, San Diego, Phoenix, Washington, D.C., St. Louis, Kansas City, Chicago, Albany. I mean, I'm all over the place, and we're also adding uh, Vegas, hopefully soon. It's all over the map, dude. We're adding, we're adding, we're adding. Go to andrewsantino.com for dates. andrewsantino.com for those dates. Enough rambling for me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. <laughs> it is the return of Sam Morell. Sam, what up? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming through, man. I'm um, very hungover. I told you when we, when you walked in, I was at a wedding. I officiated an a ortho- wedding. An Orthodox Jewish wedding. Of course. What else yeah. would I do? You know, people do think I'm Jewish when I walk through, walk through those neighborhoods. Really? The Hasidic neighborhoods, because there's a lot of redheaded uh, Hasids out there. I don't, I haven't really I'm seen I'm telling that. you, dude, that's a real thing. I had no idea. I was like, there's no fucking, there's no Jews. Or man. No redheaded oh, for Jews. for two. Yeah. <laughs> Watch though, I'm, I'm telling you, there's got to be a, there's got to be a thing that says like uh, about redheaded Jews because there's got to be something. Well, somebody looked, somebody told me one time they were like, there's a lot of Hasidic redheaded Jews. Oh, do you like that? I don't know that if one's I like peanut it. butter. It's like a little. Is it? Is try it. It's kind of like a, a That's fireball peanut thing butter whiskey. going on. All right, let me try it. Red hair is also found amongst the Ashkenazi Jewish populations. That's what I am. Are you really? Ashkenazi Jew, yeah. That's like the, that's hardcore, right? Yeah. That's like hardcore Jew? It's like Eastern European. Right, right. That's yeah. the, that's like the originals. <laughs> I'm going to probably have a little bit of this Woodford. The original, Woodford is good stuff. I just, I got to try this. Yeah, try it, try it. It's peanut butter. I bet it's all for it. It smells great. It's good. I mean, it, it depends on what you like. It depends on what you're into. I mean, it tastes amazing, but this, this is like, can't, I can't, you, I can't drink this. You can. All right, I'm going to do Who's going to judge you? Me? A lot of a lot of your YouTube a lot of the commenters. Fans? Yeah. Well, they're gonna say they're gonna say shit anyway. Yeah. Uh, do you guys read that? Because you you Norman uh, reads you all and Norman of them. have a show. Oh, he does. He reads. I don't read them. I can't. But Mark will read all of them. Why? Just to get in his own head and uh, freak out about people talking Some shit. Sort of autism that he he's some, Mark is somewhat on the spectrum. I mean, he like is. I I don't. Yeah. I don't, uh, he has to know. I for me it would make me crazy. Yeah. I'll look at like Twitter replies sometimes, but like I don't, I can't look at the YouTube ones. I think I think YouTube is is it's fun for fans to engage with each other and have like little inside bits. I think that's awesome to watch. Mm. But you know, ninety percent of the time, you're looking for the negative shit. Ten percent, you're like free and you're like whatever it is, what it is. And then most of the time, you're like f- trying to find something negative. That's what I'm saying. I've gotten better about that because I think like before the pandemic, I would be like having a great set, and then you see like one guy frowning in the crowd. You're like this fucking ass. Like you're asshole. angry. But now I feel like you kind of you had these small rooms when you came back, like half capacity, and you just see yeah. like anyone smiling. You're like fuck yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We were we were so devoid of that kind of shit. Well, you did. 
You did the Up on the Roof special. Yeah. Was it in the in the beginning of the pandemic? It was like November of last year it came yeah. out. I was just doing rooftops because I was like, I mean, what else am I going to do in New York, you know? Yeah. That was, LA, there was like, you have all this land and no shows. And then New York, I, the night I got back to the city, they're like, you want to do a show in the, the corner of 49th Street? And I was like, are you, are you kidding me? We, the, you real, did. Yeah. That's nuts. We were doing outdoor shows. That's when the birth of outdoor shows started. Yeah. Here. Because of that, they were like, restaurants or back lots and all that stuff were just opening up space for us to do them which some of them are cool some of them it's just it outside is tough man there's something about outside shows that is dynamically different for the audience it's just yeah. it just is and the lack of laughter like your rhythm is just different yeah because there's nothing to bounce the sound yeah it's laugh goes up and disappear it's like <laughs> playing one of those clubs where the ceilings are 80 feet high you know yeah you know which one i'm talking about i can't say it in the podcast because i don't want to rip on them but one in particular i'm thinking about they got such a high ceiling. The dude asked me, he's like, how was the weekend? And I was like, this was three or four years ago. I was like, it was fun, but put some, drop some sound panels. Like, do something. <laughs> do it's, something. This is a fucking basketball arena. Well, those rooms got big egos during COVID because everyone wanted to play them because yeah. of those high ceilings. So they're like, we're cavernous as fuck. You might want to come in. And then it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, but that means you're normally bad. Yeah, usually it's terrible. Yeah. But honestly, I, you know, at this point now getting back out, it's, it's, are you out a lot? It's nuts. I'm just starting to. I'm finishing this. I'm shooting this thing, and then I'm done in a week and a half. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going. It's like I'm gone, gone. I'm gone until like March. Or I've been taking like a that. weekend off since April. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's been it's been a lot. Do you ever bus, or do you just do fly, 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 fly? fly, fly. You never want to bus. Buses? No, I've never done that. Well, like if you do, like if you do. Uh, t you know, you just fly home and then go back out. Yeah. You never do consecutive weeks or anything like that? Mm -hmm. No. So, yeah. I think there's guys that do that where they'll take a bus, you know, they'll fly somewhere and then get driven to another city, stay in that city for, like, the day two before or whatever, do another gig, do a one-off or whatever, like, one night in one city. You know, I like need you to reset. Do Oh, yeah, you need I to go back? I can't just go, like, St. Louis to, like, Springfield, Missouri. I need, like, a New York buffer <laughs> yeah. in between. You need yeah. to feel human for a little yeah. bit? You need to go back by Jewish people is what you need. Yes. Yeah, that's really what it is. Springfield doesn't really have I any. I need huh? access to seltzer. <laughs> they don't have any seltzer in these mid- Where they look are at you the weird. bagels? <laughs> Listen here, boy. Get out of here. Where do you play the best? What's your best market? Where do you sell the best? New York. But, I mean, like, yeah. on the road, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's probably, like, a... Uh, any like city that's got Jews, honestly, like Chicago, oh, Boston, Chicago, yeah, Boston, DC, those markets. Right. Nothing. Uh, do you do good out here? I don't know. Pro maybe. Like, have you ever done these Irvine or Brea I've or never any of those improvs? Em. No, I've never done them. Yeah, I wonder how you do. I wonder. It's so funny when guys like De Stefano came over. If he doesn't do well, then I don't. <laughs> no, he did great. Yeah. But it's like he always talks about how like there is this weird like, well, New York guys how, how they feel about how they do West Coast shows and how we feel when we go do New York sure. or around New York. Like, Boston's great. I love Boston. It's always been good to me in Philly. But New York is scary because it's just, it, New York has so much to do. It's hard for me to want to play New York. Really? Yeah, because there's so much going on. Like, I'm playing Town Hall in November. Beautiful, uh, and beautiful I've never, venue. I've never played New York. I only York. did it once. I did the Patrice O'Neill benefit there, and it was, like, magical. It was incredible. Yeah, man. Incredible. Who, well, who was on that lineup? Colin? <sighs> no, it was Ronnie Chang, Roy Wood, uh, Andrew Schultz. Uh, who else? I don't remember. Uh, Paul Verzi, <laughs> all men. Uh, let me see. Anyone? Yeah, else? it was Patrice. What are, yeah, <laughs> I don't put a bitch on my lineup. <laughs> you know how mad uh, he would have been. Burr and Louis. As yeah, well. of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, uh, you know it's so funny that like uh, it's so funny to think about those those lineups being put together and wondering if the comic would would be satisfied. You know. The dead comic is like, is would he be good with this? Is there one guy on there that he's like... I mean, like, the benefits go to his mom, so the answer is yes. Yeah, probably. But uh, yeah. yeah, it would be funny, like, him just judging. For, you're just, he's just like, ugh. That fucking guy? That sound, like, I feel like that sound is what those comics... I just pick, whenever they go, ugh. Ugh, That yeah. sound, you're just like, ugh. That's that, their generation hurts. of, it, you suck. You bombing a joke, they don't not laugh, they go, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so much more, it cuts <laughs> through the heart so much. So much more fucking mean. Yeah. What are you going to pour now? You want a new one? Yeah, I should do a new one. What should I do? Try try this. Try this one. You might like that one. Eagle Rare. Whiskey. You're a whiskey guy. I love the... Uh, yeah. Whiskey's my number one. Yeah. What's your number two, though? Tequila. Yeah? Love tequila. Yeah. So good. I was uh, drink, I was chugging tequila at this wedding in Palm Springs. I did a wedding in Palm Springs, 98 degrees outside when we were doing the fucking <sighs> wedding. Dude, I was like, what are we... Weddings already suck, and then you're like throwing in... Heat. Humidity. Yeah, Ugh. I was no, no, opposite. Dry. It was out in Palm Springs. Oh. It was so hot. It was piping hot, but it was dry. So like, you're not really sweating. You're sitting there, 
slowly passing out. You know what I mean? You don't even know you're getting more and more dehydrated. You can't even really feel it because you don't sweat. But, you know, whatever. We had a good time. We smoked a smoked a big old joint with, like, somebody's aunt. It's always funny to see who gets high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, someone's aunt came over and was just like, what is this? What are you guys doing? It was like, <laughs> let this lady get high with us. <laughs> it was really kind of fun to, like, see who breaks out at the wedding. Yeah, most I, of the I, don't, time, I can't smoke weed with strangers. Really? It seems like a nightmare. I, I, I get, I panic. I don't, I mean, it's not for me. You get uncomfortable? I like, I like drugs that uh, push shit down. Like booze? Yeah. Yeah, you like depressants. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like stuff that brings <laughs> uh, things to light. Right, right, right. So you realize what's really going on? <laughs> yeah. That's how, well, I mean, you know what's so funny is I, I'm cool to get high with like a small group of people. I don't like when it gets too many people. I just walk away. But even but any hang is like that, I guess, right? Too many yeah. people suck. But then you add the the in your head drug. I, yeah, that freaks me out. So you don't smoke at all? Do you not smoke at all? Not really, not yeah. anymore. I I just panic. I just like I start to like look at myself and like hate myself. I don't know what it is. Like when I sm I smoked weed so much as a kid, but then I hit a certain point where I was just like every time I would get high, you just have these like negative thoughts. Yeah, yeah. You became a comic. <laughs> You became more of a comedian it's, as time goes I on. I think you're just dumber when you're a kid, and then you're yeah. like, so you can, so you don't have much of an inner monologue. But true. then, but then you get older, and it's like that inner monologue can go to a bad place. Yeah, the no, it's true. Well, I don't smoke like I used to either. It's like I, I just, I guess it, I don't have time for it as much. You have anymore. a drinker's energy to me. Yeah, I like drinking. I yeah. love. I mean, drinking is probably the thing that will kill me without a doubt. Clip that and use it at my immemorium. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's the one. Th it's like the one thing that I really like. Are your are your parents drinkers? Not at all. Really? Not at all. My biological dad drinks, but it's weird shit. Like he'll drink like Campari and soda. My dad and my mom don't drink. My mom will have like half a vodka tonic and be shit faced. She's like ninety pounds. Really? You know? Yeah. That's it. So it was yeah. never in the family. So no. is it weird when you go home and you want to have a drink? Does it just not happen? My brother will drink with me. Yeah, but. Yeah, no, my fa my sister will have a drink, but like, no, it's weird. They don't. <laughs> I remember my grandfather saw me like I was a kid. I had like a third beer at dinner, and he mm. was like, "He had three beers!" Like he was outraged. <laughs> I was like, "I don't make him get help <laughs> now." <laughs> I mean, my family's a bunch of booze bags, so it's hard for me because when we go home, it's it's always a thing. It's yeah. always a part of where we're going, what we're doing, and like, you know, it, it's all under control. I don't think anybody has a chaotic problem. But it is such a culture for my family that yeah. if somebody didn't drink and they come into our family, it's weird for them. Because they're like, you guys are, this is a lot. It's like, well, you know, it's Saturday. I don't know. It's like a thing to do. Also, we're at this, like this, at this wedding, you're hanging out all day. And yet they had to go early and do pictures and all that stuff. You have, like, you're gonna drink. You have yeah, to well, drink. That's you're sitting around. You need to, I mean, it's like strangers. It's, I mean, that's yeah. why there's an open bar because. Yeah. If you don't have an open bar at a wedding, you're fucking cruel. Hey, I've been to a few of those and it makes me sad. Cash that I'm like, bars. do you want me to pay for the, like, I'll buy it. <laughs> like, I'll fucking buy your cash wedding. <laughs> Just because I'm like, hey, please have a bar there where I don't have to, like, pull out credit card and cash. Yeah. And I can't, it can't be that expensive. The tipping out is, is, uh, is I'm fine with that if there's like a tip job. I'm fine. I'll bring cash, but like, yeah, I, yeah you need to get drunk at a wedding to yeah. to, to have fun because yeah. they're they're bad. They're not fun for they're for you. They're not for yeah. us. And the food is usually mediocre at best, unless you go to like a rich guy's wedding. Yeah, you go to somebody rich's wedding, then everything is opulent. But most average Joe weddings that you go to, the food is fucking chicken or fish, or sometimes a beef. Yeah, and you're like, this isn't that good. You went to. One on a Sunday, which is so not. I mean, like as comics, the Saturday weddings kill me. You never make them. I never make them. Yeah, you're like, in one way they're kind of nice. I'm like, well, I have an excuse. Yeah, I've this one out. I wanted to go to, but you're right. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm like, how many? It's so funny. It's so easy to use all. And any any of my friends that would hear this now know, but I use comedy so much that we're like, mm, I'm touring. Yeah, I can't, dude. Whatever it is, whatever <laughs> event you've got, I can just be like, I'm on the road. How bro. about people that give you like. I know I want you there, so here's a uh, eight months out, and you're like, y I'm gonna have, sh uh, you, yeah. it, it ain't working. Yeah, that's worse that you, it's that far away. Yeah, because then I definitely am like, probably something's gonna happen for sure by then. I call my agent. I'm like, November eighteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Get me something. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a shit if it's a if it's a cheap ass corporate yeah. gig. Get me something. Put put me at uh, McFunnies or whatever the fuck it is. That's that's Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons always goes McFunnies. McFunnies. Or, McFunnies. Yeah, he's out at fucking McFunnies and. 
Appleville, M- Maryland, or Some wherever of the, the names. Fuck. Have you done Magoobies? No, dude. And I always saw it over the years, and I and I hated the fucking name. The I'm name sure, is, I don't know about the club. The club it's, is good, but yeah. the name is like get yeah. rid of that shit. I I played it so many times. I'm where, there. Where I, is it, by the way? It's a suburb of Baltimore. It's in, called it's called Timonium, which sounds like a fucking like Pepto Bismol type drug. It's like <laughs> such a. It sounds like a modium. Is what mm-hmm. it is. That's what it is. But uh, dude, yeah, I remember I played the. I had like the worst luck there. Every time I go there, the guy would be going through some shit. You know the, the owner? Oh, like I, yeah. one time, like it was something something horrible happened to him. The other time, his dad died. It was like every time I was there, Jesus. I was like bad luck. Yeah. I remember I was there, like it must be like 2010. I was opening for Gary Goldman, and uh, we're in the green room just like hanging out, and uh, we hear him get on the loud mic, the owner for the for the Late Show, and he was like, "All right, uh, guys, quiet down, quiet down, please." And then they're loud. He's like, shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then he just pauses. He goes, I'm sorry. My dad died. Come into the stage. That's how we started the show. <laughs> Sam Morell. <laughs> my dad's dead. That's so fucked. Yeah, but at least he's honest about his emotions. You I re- know? Let him ride. I respected it a yeah. little bit. It yeah, was, you do. I, I, it, got, it gave me a laugh, and I was like, you know what? That was, it's a memory. Did you, did, you, um, did you do a run of the improvs? Are you not that guy? Do you don't do those? Not really ever. I was always the mom and pop mom club and pop. guy, yeah. yeah. Which I'm fine with. I mean, some of them you get like some of these markets. You're like, ugh. All right, here yeah. we go. Yeah, it's, I'm like, I didn't ask to do three uh, different clubs in Missouri in a three month stretch, but here we are. You know, I know. It, well, dude, it's kind of part of the thing though of like testing out what you like and what you don't like. I think like Stanhope was really good about finding gigs that he would fall in love with a gig, yeah. or then he'd be like, I'm not, I'm never playing there again. I'd rather be in that town in a rock venue or whatever. Yes. And you kind of start to map out over time what you're like, fuck that, that's fun, fuck that, For that's sure. okay. I'm starting to get to that place where I know what c- cities have the thing that I like. Do you know For what I sure. mean? And what cities I'm definitely never going back to. Some cities, like, it's not even the club's fault. You're like, this city is just uh, Sucks. not good. Yeah, go it's ahead and say it. <laughs> I mean, I was just in <laughs> okay. St. Louis. It's a tough city. I mean, it's like... It's yeah. like, it's, it's any city that's known for their barbecue just doesn't have shit else to do. It's like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why that's you have time to slow roast shit. You right. just, you don't have other activities. Yeah, there's nothing else going on. Oh, it's meth. It's like, no matter what, it's not healthy. No, you know? yeah, that's, uh, that's actually true. I think I played St. Louis once. I played it like I seven think? times. I played it since you, that you could smoke cigarettes indoors. Do they what recently? They that was have probably it? like three years ago. Honestly, four years really? ago, you could smoke. I remember just seeing a cloud of smoke being like this, and it sounds cool. But then you're like, it's cool one weekend a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> if, yeah. If, if you had to do that shit, like if you were an '80s comic and you had to deal with that every week, you'd be like, this. I feel it's sick, man. It's like Vegas. It's like working in Vegas. Fucking I had a friend that worked in Vegas. Vegas sucks. He was like, dude, that's the fuck. He's like, it's it's constant. But now, I the smoking. I think when I go to Vegas now, I don't think people smoke as much as they used it's really to. Really good. You like that, huh? Yeah, the I like Eagle that. Yeah, it's delicious. Really good. Yeah. That's good sauce. There's a great documentary about this about Buffalo Trace company about the guy that stole Pappy. Have you ever seen that? No. The Great Heist or whatever it's called. Buffalo Trace is good stuff. That's who makes that. Interesting. It's yeah. part. It's part of their uh, part of their family. There's a dude that stole barrels of pa- of the of the most prized whiskey that they've got. Pappy, yeah, the, yeah. The Pappy. Legend, isn't yeah. that Lexington or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, the Buffalo Trace Distillery is that's there. a good city, Lexington. I had fun at that club. What? Why Comedy up Com- Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, Classic. I couldn't think of it. In that behind that little hotel, the only bitch I had was outside was the summer series. So they had a band yeah. right outside. I was like, "It's fucking outside the door. You can hear it when somebody <laughs> opens the door." And I was like, "Dude, you got to tell them." Then he's like, "It's a summer series, man. Fucking <laughs> come back in the fall." I was like, "All right, valid." I went to the racetrack there. I loved it. Oh, you did? I went to. Uh, yeah, it's it's so it's hilarious. You're the worst dressed person there. They're all dressed to the nines. Oh yeah, they do. It's, all, it's yeah. an event. They wear the hats and all that bullshit. I think that was my opener. I was like, I'm the only one here who doesn't look like a, a villain in Django Unchained. I was thinking <laughs> that was my opening line. But uh, no, they looked amazing. Uh, and it's it's home of bourbon. It's kind of it's fun. I like it down there. It's actually pr- beautiful. Kentucky's really pretty. I never really yeah. knew much about it until I started touring. Because you know, to me, I didn't know the South. All I knew was North Carolina because our family. But I never went through Kentucky. And then when I did, and then I did the, the bourbon tour, like I did Buffalo Trace and walked through all that stuff. And they let me go be a piece of shit and break into everything and get fucking lit up. What's wild about those tours is they don't regulate how much you're drinking. I mean, they'll just keep giving you booze the whole time. Really? Oh, yeah, they don't give a shit. They, Damn. And, there's, and there's no, there's no like, you don't pay for like, oh, you get one drink per ticket. Like, that's not a, you just keep having it if you want it. Damn. Yeah, it was a little that's, ridiculous. I was like, this is wildly irresponsible, especially because it's not, Near you, a city, you, you did that on a, on a show day. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah. You get so sleepy. That's dude, you do that's the thing. People are like, you gotta do this in this city, you gotta do that. And you're like, I gotta work tonight, dude. Yeah, I got, it's tough. Like two show, doing two shows after barbecue. Like I didn't there was a night in St. Louis where it was like, I don't think I'm gonna make it to stage. I had some sort of food poisoning. I couldn't get off the toilet. I'm give, I'm handing a note through a bathroom door to to give to the to, to pass along to Gary Veter who's stretch, on stage. Stretch, stretch. He had to do like an extra ten because I was like I'm chugging Pepto Bismol on the toilet uh, trying to trying to survive. You made it to the set though. I made it, champ. The first twenty See? minutes were, were like me do, doing a lot of Kegels trying to like hold it in, but it, it, dude, it was it was rough. I no, was, it is. I was in pain, and uh, there's something that club it was so funny, man. The first night. I'm in the bathroom and it just the door locks. So I'm texting the manager. I'm like, hey man, I can't get out. You're and locked in the bathroom? In the bathroom. I'm like, I can't. Is something's Bad wrong. System. And they're like, we're there. This has happened before. I'm like, it's happened before. Like, you've got to <laughs> do something about this. The guy's trying to open the door, and I'm like, I'm like trying to get out. And I and he's like, we can't do it. So I'm like, well, what do we do? And he's like, you might have to kick. He's like, I'll kick it in. I was like, well, I should kick it because it's going this way. Yeah. So I, I'm literally, I kick the door in. I felt like a cop in an 80s movie. I, mean, I kicked the door in. Put me on stage. And, and Gary's calling. He's like waiting for me. It's been like a minute and a half of him calling me. And I, I kick a door in and go on stage. It felt kind of cool. What club was that? It was uh, Helium. In oh, Louis. Helium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is the way to do it. Kick in a fucking door and get on stage. You request that at all your future <laughs> venues. Lock me in so let me bust it the fuck open. That's the only way I'm doing this and show. And then hand me a, a bag of Coke and let me just go, I knew it. <laughs> Where do you where do you see your future ride? Like, say you get fucking massive. Like you, my like, rider. Leah, where do you see your rider in the future? Are you going to be a brat? No, I'm pretty simple. Like I, like what do you want before you go on stage? Just like something that's not going to like food that's not going to weigh me down and like a drink usually. You do have a drink before you go on. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe one. I'll do like a. I always I, take one on. I usually do like a vodka soda now just for the hangovers. You know, on the road. Wait, see, that's weird. I get w way worse with vodka for some reason. Really? Yeah, man. That's why I started tequila, because I was like, if it wasn't whiskey, everything else would make me feel like shit. I'm like a housewife up there, dude. I need, I need a Sweet vodka soda. Sweetheart, yeah. yeah. Um, Skinny margarita. I I'll do a Manhattan, but like, the problem is you go to these clubs, and you're like, can I get a Negroni? And they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. That's go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you have an Aperol Spritz? They're like, get on stage. Negroni's a classic, No, dude. it is good. It Look, is good. It's delicious, but also, yeah. I'm not asking for that at the club. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get beat I up stink. by the staff. I yeah, stink, yeah. Stink. They shank me on the way out. <laughs> yeah, you fucking dork. <laughs> like, throw it at him. Throw it at him. <laughs> when people buy you drinks and you're on stage, do you drink them or no? Sometimes See, I don't I, want. I want to say no because I don't want to encourage it. But yeah, like I say no. Sometimes if like, um, well, you've heard the stories about some people. They'll like they'll tell the staff like, get me a vodka, but make it water because I can't keep doing these shots. Yeah, like Bert, like Bert's, like people. Some people that are like full on alcoholics on stage. Bert drinks the whole fucking. So it's like I'm sure people send him stuff the whole time. I know he's got to have the staff be like, look, I'm not having all these shots. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give me something else because I, I can't die tonight. Yeah, it's tough when you're drinking up there where, where you're just like, this is, uh, it sometimes gets to a point where you're like, you're going to ruin the show. It's weird. You used to play at clubs where like guys would be like, do a shot, like the owner would be like, do a shot. And you'd be like, this is your club. Yeah. You're fucking up the gig now. Yeah. You're my, are, do you want to fuck this up? The, you're the boss. You're ruining <laughs> this thing. Also fine. I'll do it, but I'll do it. I, I remember I did a club back in the day in Colorado Springs and they, the guy was egging me on. He's like, have a beer, you pussy. And I was like, all right, fine. And then like by the end of the week, they handed me a bill. I was like, fuck you. Wait, really? Yeah. That's yeah. bullshit. <laughs> that kind of stuff is weird. I, 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 over the years, I do remember in a few instances where people were like, do you want them on your tab? Like, yeah. on, like, like, you know, like what? And I was like, what? They're fucking, there's two people in the green room having like a drink. Like, that, is that a thing I have a to tab. pay for? Yeah. Yeah, and I did. I remember back in the day, you did have to pay. And it's like, that cost the club nothing. Oh, how about they, the clubs that would have like the menu item and it's like one would say uh, opening acts and one would say headliners. headliners and yeah. that's like, that's like the fish or the steak. And you're right. like, do I have to order the opening act? <laughs> right. Yeah. You can order off the left side of the menu. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, dude. It is so diminutive. When you first start getting into comedy, you are, you do feel the lumps of. <laughs> The road, you know what I mean? You're like, this is yeah. miserable. The hotel is sad. You don't ever get to eat good food. Your travel was a nightmare because you probably had to fucking stop at least once. I remember I booked a, a flight once on something called Cheapo Air. Cheap O Air. That was the name of the site, and I and shocker, uh, it was it didn't work out for me. Yeah, it no was shit. like <laughs> I, I they the the trick of the website is we'll book you a connect flight on different airlines. So here's the thing, I missed the connection. Of course, ne neither airline is accountable. They're like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, why would you do that? Why would you do cheapo? You're like, listen, I thought, <laughs> and honestly, it's probably only to save like thirty bucks. Exactly. And then on top of that, you don't get like airline status. You're, it's young broke comic bullshit. Yeah, we did, dude. I did it. Oh, and I used to just stick to. 
for a while I would only do Southwest because they could they would be cheap and I could just if it if you miss a flight there's a thousand Southwest flights yeah you're like I'll get another one to find I don't give a shit and I'll sit in the back of this fucking plane I I did Southwest for so often for so long that I built status but then I was like well I can't they don't go anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't go to Europe on Southwest. Yeah. I was like, why do I have all these fucking points for Southwest? I can't, yeah, it's, like... it's a region. Right. I can't, I can't. I can't. <laughs> the I'm name stuck. of the airline is like a quadrant yeah. of the country. <laughs> like, you can fly from, from <laughs> LA to Arizona for free. That's it. That's like the only thing you get away with. But you know what? Yeah. I, I think it's like, it's good that you have those fucking days. Then you get to appreciate, you know, look at you now. You're fucking, you're killing it, huh? Things are going all right. Life's, are, life's certain, good. Uh, in, yeah, some cities are good. Other, you know how it is. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I see what you're doing. It's great, man. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah, it's good. I, it's, 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 um, I think people were super fucking hungry for stand up to come back. I think all this bullshit made it's everybody crazy. more like, can we just see live shit again? And in fact, booking venues got tough for me because everyone wanted to tour again. Musicians and fucking artists and uh, or orchestra crews and uh, like tiny groups of different art that you forget about all play the same venue. Yeah, you're, like, you're booking theaters. You're like, you're like, I didn't realize I was going against Alanis Borset. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah, is crazy, yeah, no, no. you know? No, for me, it's like a, a Savion Glover in a tap crew or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, dude, he was on Sesame Street. He's killing it. But I... <laughs> But it is hard yeah. to like slot into some of these smaller theaters because yeah. bigger bands want them. Sure. And they're always going to give them to them because they're like, what? We've been making money for them for 20 years. Sorry, dude. Hootie and the Blowfish reunion tour is <laughs> going down. <laughs> Let me open for you guys. Let me open, Hootie. Let me open up for you. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, I've spoken many times on this podcast as well as over on my other podcast about better help and how much I believe in it, how much I like it, how much I personally use it. Um, better help is incredible. Uh, truly, if there's something interfering with your your happiness and, and blocking you from getting to the place that you need to be, BetterHelp, I think, can help you. They're going to assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And I got to tell you, they have such a broad range of expertise, um, you know, that they're, they're focusing on trying to get you to a place where you feel better about yourself and what's going on in your life. You can log in any anytime, anywhere. You're going to get timely and thoughtful responses and you can schedule weekly uh, video phone, video or phone sessions so you won't ever sit in one of those uncomfortable waiting rooms. Look, I've done traditional offline therapy. I think this is the answer. Uh, there was a few blessings that came from uh, that virus that swept the world. And this one might be one of them that you can get help from the comfort of your own home, which I think is very important. And for many of my listeners know I'm open about this stuff. I think it's, uh, I think it's something that we all need, we could all use. And this is more affordable than traditional offline counseling, which I think is is wonderful. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. It's um, professional counseling done securely online. You can go to betterhelp.com slash whiskey. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Whiskey Ginger listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash whiskey, betterhelp dot com slash whiskey. How do you meet the demands of a demanding world? It's very tough out there. And uh, in 2016, Cuts Clothing, their founder, uh, Stephen Borelli, he felt boxed in by his wardrobe. He hated having to compromise between style and comfort, so he decided to do something about it. And boy, did he ever started uh, reinventing uh, with that humble plain tee. And what ended up happening was GQ called it the only shirt worth wearing. What you know about that? Uh, Cuts Clothing is incredible. They sent me this stuff, and I got to tell you, awesome. Like, totally, totally beautiful, well-made, comfortable. Um, they made, uh, they became world famous for making shirts that look as great as they feel, and it's true, man. There's something really nice about it, whether you're working in an office job or you're playing a sport or you're going to hang out uh, or have a, a business cash dinner meeting. Cuts makes incredible stuff, and I gotta tell you, I've been a big fan. I, I really do like their stuff, and you can still look sharp even though you're, you know, chilling. Uh, and Cuts just released their new always-on joggers, designed uh, never to take a day, day off, even when you do, whether you're community the office or out on a date. Cuts joggers offer comfort that never quits style and never that disappoints. For a wardrobe as ambitious as you are, as seen on the world's elite athletes like Patrick Mahomes, Damian Lillard, Tim Tebow, Bryce Harper, just to name a few. These people are clutch. Get with the times. It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's work, leisure, apparel for the sport of business, baby. Get 15% off your first order at cutsclothing.com slash whiskey. Cutsclothing.com slash whiskey for 15% off your first order. Ginger. I like gingers. How many cities are you going to do this year? Do you know? I Well, I haven't taken a weekend off since April, and I'm, I'm probably going to do it through, like, 
mid November. I'll chill for a couple of weeks and then I'll do I'll I'll get back at it in December. Jesus Christ. Um, and you pushed out two specials within a couple of years anyway. Are you doing another one? I now? did two last year. I'm doing a new, I'd say like fifty minutes on the road. So I'd say like that it's 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 and it's better than the rooftop special. The quality's better because I didn't get to really work that one out. Sure. Like I'd like to, like the one before that was much more uh much tighter. This one's gonna be really good. So I'm I'm excited to to tape it, I don't know when, but sometime next year. Where are you going to do it, do you think? I don't know yet. I was thinking Chicago. I wanted to do, I called my agent, I was like, I want to do Town Hall. And he's like, well, you're going to have to, you're, we're going to self-release it again. He was like, well, you're going to have to pay for it. So you're going to have to spend like 150 grand to Aye. make it look that way. And I was like, fuck Town Hall. Yeah, fuck you know? that. <laughs> Scratch. I called him all cocky, like, we're doing Town Hall. And he was like, here's why that doesn't work. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> Open your wallet, bitch. <laughs> Wait, but you know, Chicago's tough because of the unions. You know that it's super expensive. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, it's so expensive. We found a small place that I think that we can pull off. What's it called? It's do called you know? The Den. I, I'd like to do it there. I'm doing uh, five shows there this month. Where's it at? Do you know I don't know where it is. It's newer. But uh, I, that, I like the, how it looks, so I'd like to do one there and do a small one there. How many seats is it? Only like three hundred something. It's small. See, I think I think if I do, if I ever film something again, I'm gonna. Um, I want to do something like nice and tight and tiny. I think like two fifty, like a. It's a like, good number. Like the Comedy Store original room is kind of my. That's like my favorite. I think Why don't you do two, it there? Two two five, because so many people have like, not that that matters, but you know, like Chappelle and. Louis and so many of those guys did shit from there. I don't know. It's tough. I guess I don't know. It doesn't yeah, really but, matter, but, but something in my a, head. Doing is, a home court uh, special so nice though. It is, but also the comedy store is, uh, you know, uh, you never know with the comedy store. It's chaos. Do you know what I mean? Like some nights are so much hotter than other nights. But they're your people. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I also think the club has a tough time shutting down for specials and stuff like that anymore. I think that was the, uh, I think, pick I think them, do it they on might. A, if you do it on a Monday and you pack yeah. it with your people, why not? I might. Look at this. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, it's in Wicker Park. Yeah. I've, and so the den is a small theater, but then do you, so it's not like a traditional club. You buy it out and you're doing five, you're like, you're, you're leasing it out well, from not, them. Well, yeah, I have, I, this is just an idea. I haven't, yeah. decided, I haven't committed to anything. But well, no, like, you I, are committing right now live I'm, on the show. Fuck. All yeah. right. Uh, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to do five shows just there to, uh, to like just do shows, but then I, I'd want to go back early next year probably. Yeah, you probably do well in Chicago. Chicago is, has Chicago and New York are cousins. Yeah, you know we have that's that. why we're like cousins. I man. know it's where we are like cousins. We're cousins. By the way, I saw that Yankee hat, and I get. And you're welcome for fucking Anthony Rizzo. No better place <laughs> for a fucking yeah. guinea to end up than in New York. It is incredible because we love that guy. I thought Anthony Rizzo was so cool. He was a badass. Dude. Yeah, and it was just like if I was gonna give up guys to any team, it was cool to see that fucking WAP go to go to New York because I was like, that's where the guinea belongs. Let yeah, him go the, there. The, the Benz and Hers boys rocking a Rizzo, some old Giambi shirt, yeah, you know. That's cool, man. I think DiMaggio. that's cool. I think that's cool that he belongs in that. You know what I mean? Like we got, uh, Chris Bryant shipped him off to San Francisco, which I couldn't care less about. I was that's like, a beautiful park though. Yeah. It's, that it's is like, stunning. that is, that might be the prettiest park. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's, inc I think, I think that or, I mean, yeah, pretty, you're right. I guess visually stunning. I would say like for feels, Boston, Fenway or Wrigley were always the most like, I don't know, gave me such a good vibe inside. But like, but but visually, you know what else is really nice? San Diego, Petco is beautiful. I gotta go there, man. Because it they sits got that, below that, the street. Oh, they got a, they got some fun players too on that team. Yeah, now. man, they're fucking. They're, I still love baseball, bad. man. Me too. Me and you. Pe people fucking hate on it so much. It's boring. Yeah. Well, you make a day of it. You go to the park. I I love watching a game and uh that fuck. Was there a better park to have a home run king in than that San Francisco one? It was incredible. Every time he hit, on, every time he got up, you're like, "There's gonna be a fucking dude in a kayak." This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love hitting it. it into McCovey Cove and watching guys fist fight over baseballs and water. <laughs> that's when baseball gets cool. Anybody I know that doesn't like baseball, that's a sports fan, that's a friend. The reason they're all, they're all, their same excuse is always it's boring, it's slow, and it's like. Yeah, but I mean, and what's a soccer score? One, one zero. Yeah, one like, nil. Yeah, exactly. I it's can't. like that. I can't do. I feel like I could get into it, but I just I I think I could get into any sport if I just had the right guy guiding me. Sure, but I mean, live I can do. But I've tried to watch soccer on TV. On TV, it's tough. It's just hard. I don't know. I just I'm like uh, <laughs> at least with baseball, you feel a lot of strategy <laughs> happening. Yeah, like you know, there's strategic moves being planned and placed right now. Just like a shift, you even even on a shift. You're we're like, also of the age of like the last generation of baseball fans, yeah. Because that strike fucked them so hard, so hard. Yeah. Then then people kind of felt the same way that a lot of people I think feel about like the NBA, where it's like a joke kind of now. And I still like the NBA. I love but, it. But I think people think it's kind of a joke. 
it has become this circus of like, where do you play? Who's your team? I mean, do you see? Look at the fucking Lakers. Yeah, it's comical. Yeah. You know, what the fuck is that? It, did you assemble the Avengers for a basketball team? It's insane. <laughs> it's like, but it's like the Avengers, like after a couple torn ACLs. Like it's not <laughs> yeah, even like yeah. the yeah. Avengers after rehab. <laughs> the Avengers in rehab. <laughs> it is true, but I mean, it's just like these super teams. You know, I think we talked about this on your show. Like the, Garnett committing himself to Minnesota for far too long was something cool. There was cool, something cool about it. It is cool, and that doesn't happen. That doesn't exist anymore. Like, yeah, dude, it's almost like in The Wire when, you know, Bodie, like, died on his block. You're like, but it was his block. It was his block. <laughs> he, yeah, by the way, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Fucking Wire, yeah. if you're oh. 20 years late. Have you seen The Sopranos movie? The, the, about his son? Yeah. No, I, I want to watch it. I haven't seen it yet. Is it, oh, is it not good? Oh, it's not good? Sopranos is my favorite show of all time. Yes, it's the best. I was, I was disappointed. You were let down. Yeah. And it's his kid. He has a small part. It's not really, it, I, one thing I love, I mean, there are those hilarious, like, here's the problem with it. It's like. It's a movie, and it's not really The Sopranos, but the, so it's like kind of like that fan, uh, whatever you call it, like fanfare. But also, you have it's almost like derivative of like a okay mob movie, uh, and it's like it just makes you miss Gandolfini. Shit, just makes you miss. I you wanted know, it to hit really bad, me, dude. It's like the only movie I was like pumped for for like two years for it to come out. Yeah, I was so pumped, and like uh, I do like the shit, and I do love those like mafia tropes that are like. How, how how shitty men could be because this mm -hmm. isn't even like 90s sopranos this is like 60s sopranos yeah so men were even shittier right where like a man would just be like like you know there's a scene not no spoiler i won't say who dies but someone dies and a and a and the main guy is like uh, his wife is yelling as he's trying to get rid of the body she's yelling uh you want pork chops for dinner and he's uh. just like uh he's like yeah whatever and then <laughs> she's like with the applesauce he's like get off my back like <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all you have to do to be a man back then. Right. You're just like, what do you want from me, Linda? <laughs> I'm cutting up this piece of shit. <laughs> that is that it, there are those tropes that like I, they're kind of comical now, but like in the Goodfellas era, it was great because you didn't yes. see it a lot. But that was also like nothing had been made that way before. Right. Totally, like, that's Mom, what I mean. Like Godfather's great, but it wasn't Goodfellas is nothing like Godfather. No, totally different. It, I mean, it, Goodfellas is literally one of my favorite movies of all time. Just because I think like the uh, the violence was so cool. I loved the, I loved how like real the violence was. I was like, this is that insane. Layla scene where they're just blasting that oh, out. Dude, the best. That's who told me? Somebody said. Somebody told me a story that they were sitting next to Ray Liotta on a flight. God, who told me this? A comic. And he was talking. Oh no, no, an actor friend of mine. I, I, a guy I know that's an actor. They were shooting a thing. He was going to New York. And Leota was on there, and he was getting fucking zoused. And, uh, and he was mumbly-bumbly, and he was like, they were just talking, and he was like, I'm not going to ask him any, you know, annoying film questions. He's like, I don't sure. want to be that guy. Sure. Don't even want to bother him. But he started talking. And he said, you know that guy that I beat with the gun? You know that scene? The where great he fucking, scene, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Lorraine Bracco, the guy who was a little exactly. bit of a... I was going to say a flirt, a little yeah. more than that, probably. <laughs> yeah, 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 just a little. <laughs> when you watch that again. When he, when he, he goes, he goes, huh? That actor, I really, I just, I settled in. I really wanted it to be real. I wanted to beat him to death with that gun. And so, like, a couple of takes, he would he accidentally hit the fucking guy. Wow. Yeah, because he really wanted to kill this guy. Jeez. He's like, the actor was, was good, and he just, his vibe, I just wanted to beat the shit out of him. Because the guy was good at, good at portraying one of those douchebags. <laughs> when method acting goes wrong, he just fucking <laughs> beats a guy to death. I like Jesus. it. I'm into it. I think that should be part of it. <laughs> hey, man, the hockey fights happen. You know what I mean? Sometimes on film, maybe let these guys slug it out. You do hear those stories sometimes that people get aggressive in fight scenes, yeah. and they can't help but start, start to fight a little bit, you know? Yeah, dude. Well, what can you, I mean... At some point, that aggression and that patience and the timing and then doing it over and over and over and over, some point of you, you might snap. Do you know the guy, Bob Golub? No. He's, a, he's an old school comic. He's in Goodfellas. He's the guy who says, uh, two N-words stole my truck. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah that yeah. guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's that guy in that scene. And then uh, I remember he told me once, he just, it became like a rumor that people thought he improvised that line. I'm like, how the fuck does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> you have one line of movie, you're like, hey, Scorsese, I'm going to take this one, yeah. and I'm going to throw in a slur <laughs> twice. Yeah. It's I, also such an this. insane thing to have one, your one line is that. It's, yeah. It's kind of, it's it's awesome to be in that movie, but then also you're like, oh my God, this is playing forever. Imagine now, see, back then was a different time. You, If you read that now in any script, you're like, I can't 
they're like, listen, dude, it's Scorsese. You're like, I, I just, I don't think I can do it, man. I have a whole career ahead of me. By the way, that's the thing about. He was a really nice guy, and you could tell he felt bad about it too, which is like the funniest. Really? But, oh, not bad, but like he was just like, ah, it's like a, that. I mean, he felt bad about that rumor, which I'm like, well, that's not you. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> but you know what? Then it is now it's cemented as well on this show. Yeah. Now someone's gonna go. You know what I heard? That that guy improv improv that shit. That's what happens, dude. One person says it on a I'm thing, and then it that. just gets floated away. <laughs> is he alive? This guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, is he still doing stand up? I think so. Yeah. I, wow. I, years ago, I did something with him. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got to be older by now. He's got to be what? It's not that old. I don't think sixties. Like really, 60s, I would say seventies yeah. by. Because what? That movie was so long ago. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. It's not that long ago. Thirty years. Thirty years is a long time. Yeah, all right. Yeah, dude, that's, you said it like it wasn't. I was like, yeah, 30 years is a fucking I know, long but for time. Like, for like a classic, like there are not, you know, the 90s was so good for movies. Like, oh, my God. Like, the 90s was just a great decade. I'm like realizing that now. I'm like, shit, I, <laughs> we took for granted there was like so many, I mean, Michael Jordan, you're a Chicago guy, yeah. like MJ, Seinfeld. Yeah. Fuck, and so many great so things. So many things, and also I think great cult movies. culturally film took a lot of good shots. Like it was kind of cool to see like, unknowns becoming leads of movies, which mm. I, you just literally can't do anymore. I mean, like, they're never going to just throw you into a film because you're a great comic now. Right. It's, it's just not the case. Dude. And, it, and they used to just be like, this guy's a great comedian. We see he can kind of act. Let's make him in some other semi-famous well, guy. I mean, Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, it just became <laughs> like a norm to go, well, we can try. I mean, yeah. fucking Everybody Loves Raymond was like, guy's a great yes. comic. And they're like, give him a show. And it was a fucking smash. They don't. King and Queens. When, when's the last time they've done that? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't, they don't do that anymore. You don't, I think like. Well, they do that, but now it's like, okay, we're going to test it for a year and a half. Right. You got to write six different drafts and then we're not going to pick it up. Yeah, we're going to bury it. Yeah. Yeah. And if we do put it on the air, it'll be a fucking like 130 on the CW. And we're going to give you enough notes that it's fucking horrible. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's kind of what happened to Louis' first show was that they, 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 they made it the thing that he didn't want it to be. And that's why he didn't want to do TV until he did the second version of it, which was obviously yeah. great. Yeah. That's why FX does some good shit. They let people kind of fly free. I, that's what I do like about them. They're competitive too, man. It's like those guys, they've got shows, and I'm on that fucking network, but there's shows on there that I'm like blown away by how, yeah. how much money they spend on fucking TV now. I mean, TV's movie. I mean, truly now you're like, it's because movie stars do TV, and it used to be like, you know, you're a loser if you do TV. It's like, I like TV. Oh, you see what they do on, like, Apple. It's crazy. They have, yeah. like, four shows, and they're, like, fucking everything. Yeah. E everything we make on the phones, let's put in a Ted Lasso in the morning show. That fucking show. What did it win? I won all the fucking awards that Ted. It's did you good. watch it? Yeah, I like yeah. it. I saw the first season. It's very, uh... Yeah, the first, it, what, this is the there's second? episodes every once in a while, I'm like, this is a little uh, too much in terms of the cuteness, but it's, it's a great show. I mean, there, there's one episode where one of the soccer players is on, like, a dating app, and he's like... She replied. I'm like, yeah, that's really realistic for a pro <laughs> a footballer. Pro, yeah, a multi-millionaire, famous, <laughs> internationally famous footballer. But, but you it's, know, it's a good show. People do like that. I think people needed something that wasn't, um, that wasn't so fucking, uh, that wasn't COVID-y. That was the one thing. I think people were like, don't give me any fucking covid -y shit. Yeah. Because I know there's shows out right now that are like about this revolution of time of like. Right. And I think people are like, that. I fucking lived it every day. I don't people want, want it on TV. for sure. Yeah. And that's, Absolutely. A f that's fantasy. It's like a Disney movie almost where you're like, I know it's cheesy and cute and corny. I like it. He, it's the, nice. The acting's great and it's, and it's, it's a feel good show. Yeah. Sudeikis is fucking really good. And, and, he's uh, great, man. And uh, Br uh, Brett Goldstein at, at uh, Roy Kent. He's really fucking good. Oh, my good God. Too. I love that guy. That dude's good. He was funny as shit. Did you see his acceptance at the, at the, at the Emmy? It was really good. He won the Emmy, too? Yeah, it was something like, uh, they were like, he's like, they told me I couldn't cuss, uh, so this will be really fucking short. Oh, that's great. I was like, that's great. It was, like a very, it was very, like, comedian come out timing to, to, to accept the award. And, you know, it's so funny. You know that those things are still kind of hoity-toity. You know someone in the booth is like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, they, they still are frustrated by that, you know? Oh, man, Ricky Gervais is like an outlaw for what he did at the Emmys, you the know? The Golden Globes, right? Wasn't that Golden Globes? Or no, uh, no, no. Maybe it was yeah, Emmys. It's all the same to me. I yeah, don't me know. too, I know. But, but uh, yeah, man, he, uh, those yeah. award shows, like, who gives a fuck is the other thing, because it's like, it's, gr it's great for you if you win, but if yeah. you don't win, like, I mean... We're, we're doing, like, I'm doing, like, strip mall gigs. I can't even, like, wrap my head around, like, being around gowns. You yeah. know what I mean? It's remarkably, um, uh, the op it's, like, the antithesis of what I enjoy. I don't like that kind of fodder. I don't like, I'm not good at celebrations. I don't like any of that stuff, really. Like, when also, I, when the I rap reward is thing, that you're on the hit show. 
Yeah, <laughs> not the not the statue. You're on. The yeah, sh- if you, the if head. it's working, it's doing well, and you don't need to yeah. do the other things. I just think it's weird. It, well, like when you wrap a show, you know, so, sometimes they clap you out, you know, and they pause production. And I always tell them not to. I'm like, please don't, because I'm going home, and these guys still have to fucking work. <laughs> it's annoying to be like, all right, it's a wrap on Sam. Let's give it a look at him. Look at Sam, <laughs> and you feel like a cunt, and you're like, I'm sorry, you guys are still here for four more hours. I don't like that. I just like, yeah. let me do the job and then go home. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. How much is that doggy in the window? Arf, arf. What is his breed and health? <laughs> That's what I'm pushing right now is uh, the breed and health uh, kit. You can find out everything you need to know about your pup. Look, I'm a big fan of my puppuccino, the Cupster Pupster. She's got a special place in my heart. I love her so much. And uh, Embark reached out and talked about, you know, do you know the specific breed of your dog and you know the health risks and benefits of, of everything about them? And I thought that was pretty incredible. 72% of people they took a survey didn't know what kind of dog they have. Yeah, I definitely was that human being. And now I do. I sent in uh, the Embark dog DNA test and you find out everything you need to know. All the different breed mixes. She's a mutt, dude. She's about six. I think it was six different things. Um, it's important to know this. People don't know, but it's important to know this because you you learn some of these health risks and factors for your dog. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we used to feed her, you know, a bunch of different kinds of food and she wouldn't really eat. And then we find found out what she was not allergic to, but didn't handle well. And we switched over and boy, oh boy, that helped us out so very much. I think it's incredible. You also learn, you know, your dog's strengths and weaknesses. My dog's strength is jumping and running. Weaknesses, listening, uh, uh, coming back uh, when I call her, uh, not chasing after stuff. So I don't think they can help you with that. But... You can learn your dog's inner secrets with Embark. It's the highest rated dog DNA test. Right now, Embark has an offer uh, on their breed and health kit for our listeners. Go to EmbarkVet.com to get free shipping and save $50 off your Embark breed and health kit with promo code WHISKEY. Visit EmbarkVet.com and use the promo code WHISKEY to save $50 today. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Find out more about your puppuccino. Show them the love that they deserve. Find out their health benefits and risks and find out who they really are. Don't you want to know who your dog really is? Go to EmbarkVet.com. Use that promo code WHISKEY. Save that 50 bucks today. I'm a big fan of the Swedes, the Swedish people. They're wonderful. And I got to tell you about Urbanista Edfons. Urbanista was born in uh, 2010 in Stockholm, Sweden, out of love for cities and urban life. Uh, drawing inspiration from the world's greatest cities and rooted in Scandinavian design and tradition. Our products are sleek, stylish, and sound great. And this is fact, fact, fact. Urbanista sent me um, some uh, true wireless earphones, and I got to tell you, bueno, bueno, bueno. Incredible. Also sleek and beautiful. Their style definitely is obvious. Uh, those Swedes, man, those fun, funky Swedes. They're black, and the, the case is very sleek, and it's got this cool matte finish on it. And these things are designed for life in motion. They have a 365-day warranty on all products. That's one calendar year, case you were wondering. And Urbanista is great. They're designed for a secure experience and a smooth, comfortable fit, and they do log into my weird-sized ear holes. I will say that. That was huge for me. Um, They have a redesigned charging case with an LED battery indicator light that holds up to five charges. Very cool. Comes with protection against splash and water, in case you're watering around. And available in multiple colors, ranging from black, white, rose, gold, uh, to olive green. Um... And the uh, Activate Noise Canceling reduces unwanted sound with superior precision. It really does knock out all the stuff around you. If you're flying on planes or if you're traveling, um, these uh, the London are impressive. Very, very impressive. And a range of vibrant Cosmo colors to express your vibe. Those London ones got pearl white, midnight black, rose gold, dark sapphire, if you want to be a spicy little boy like me. They got 7.5 hours playtime with additional four, four charges inside that case. They're pretty incredible. The Stockholm Plus is the one I talked about before, and the London are uh, phenomenal. Uh, genuinely, I think it's maybe one of the best products that's got sent to me that I put inside of my ear holes. And right now, Urbanista has a special offer for Whiskey Ginge listeners. Go to urbanista.com slash whiskey to get 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off everything. Come on, man. You'll even get free shipping on all orders over $60. So go to urbanista.com slash whiskey for 20% off. That's urbanista.com slash whiskey. Listen up. I like gingers. Well, remember how much bigger the Oscars used to be? Now it's like a hell gig. I mean, what they did to Kevin Hart, it was kind of like, you can't just like, 
You can't be this hoity-toity and give Roman Polanski a lifetime achievement award. Yeah, what the fuck? You yeah. can't like like I love his I love Chinatown as much as the next guy, but you can't you can't be like Kevin Hart uh, tweeted something homophobic in two thousand nine. And you're like, cool, you should, you should look into what Polanski did in the 70s, because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's worse. And the 80s, and the <laughs> 90s, yeah. Just go decade by decade. <laughs> no, yeah, the, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, the business has always been that way of, like, they'll decide what they're upset about. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like, shouldn't we all be there? Like, no, 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 we'll pick what we'd like to be fucking exactly. pissed off about. Exactly. I, that that's the kind of game that I I don't know. I, don't I used really... to watch the Oscars as a kid and think it was cool, and now I'm like, I can't imagine watching this shit. Yeah, it's not for me, man. I don't really. Well, but I was I never really liked. I I was never a um, film buff or any of that stuff. Like I liked I liked it, but I wasn't into the vibe of like uh, a kid actor. I knew I wanted to be an actor. The yeah, movies yeah. for me were Which like is weird because you're such a good actor. Well, thanks. I just fucking I just it never was my like. I want to do it so bad, and I want to be involved in the world and. To me, it was always kind of like, I think it looks really fun. Yeah. And I started trying it, you know, uh, 15 years ago, and I liked it. I was like, this could be fun. I think this could be fucking fun. And I was trying to do it congruently when I started stand-up because I was like, you know, fucking stand-up was emotionally draining. I was just like, you know, eating shit at why, bar why shows. Why not throw some auditions in the mix to, yeah. to, to give me some... Uh... Well, you might as well pile it on. At some point, you're like, I'm already <laughs> losing. It's not like it can... You know what I mean? It's because if if I'm spinning enough of those plates, I was like, well, something will something will have to like. At some point, it becomes like out. BDSM. You're like, just fucking. You start to like it, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like, tell me no. <laughs> tell me to fuck off. Tell me to walk out. Sometimes I would bomb auditions on purpose, kind of to feel like really, truly, wow. honestly. Yeah, really weird. I vividly remember doing it a few times. Well, it makes know. you memorable, right? If, you, if it's that bad, they're like, that was something. Yeah, because I think sometimes I knew I was never gonna get a thing, and it was fucking such a far fetched bullshit like i was like i have no business even trying to do this so i just bomb bad like i would just purposely fuck up the lines and throw my own shit in there and i don't know because it was like uh, me having fun with a shitty situation because you're like you're gonna give this to the to the famous guy in the hallway that i just passed right you don't fucking want me that's the weird thing where you're just like am i just here to like <laughs> to, to like get him more mo like to lower his money or something yeah you do know that right there's a bait that's a that's a bait yeah. bait is a real thing like tv does this a lot they test two people yeah and what they'll do is they already have chosen one, but they'll test against somebody for the network's kind of balance, and it also is for wage increases. So it's like you can test against somebody, and they can negotiate for a certain you know level of money increases. It's really fucked up. It's disgusting. And most of the time, they all know who the bait is. Like they're all like, "Oh, that guy's just you know he's just like bait. Yeah. I'm bait. Yeah, you're bait. <laughs> you're the bait. <laughs> Bring him in." <laughs> no, but it's it, I think it's really fucked up. And we've all been on both sides of the ball, and you know that you're like. Pfft. This is bullshit. Well, you're man. you're like I acted in like two things. You've done a million things. I mean, I you know so, uh, so, uh, the thing I'm doing the most now is like voiceover. You have a fucking have you ever done it? I, you know, I'm so bad. Sometimes I just forget to reply to the emails. Don't they reply. Send me. I got to do it. I you know uh, I've done it. I you know you just get demoralized though. It's weird. Like I would just do them and they and they never worked out. But I should do more of them. I'll say this. This sounds annoying to hear, but yeah. eight years I was auditioning and then finally I got a thing. But the best part about VO was like I sent it in and didn't think about it ever again. I gotta do. I gotta be better. Yeah, about your it. voice is so good. You got Thanks, that. Man. You got that fucking. You got that deep throat, baby. Thank you, man. You got that deepness, baby. Yeah, like, you have fucking, a good voice. When Look Stern, when Stern used to, uh, that's like Stern used to fucking uh, go lower and deeper because because it turned women on. But it is true. That is so funny. Like chicks loved how deep his voice was and just like the the tone of it was so sexy. But yeah, you look at him and you're like, this guy's not an icon of sex. Yeah, but, but he, he is. Got, but he is. No, he is. He absolutely fucking is. That guy got so much money from Sirius. That that was one of those deals where you're like, there's no way this is going to work out. I know. I thought fake for sure. I was like, this is all funny money. At some point, it's going to collapse and they're going to be like, it's over. <laughs> I mean, I'm still. I still think they're probably struggling to stay even remotely I mean, that, alive. That deal was like. That's that was like keeping Don Buckwald afloat, right? That yeah. agency, you're like, yeah. there's no. Are you gonna judge me if I have more peanut butter? Why would I? Are you All kidding right. me? Thank you. You're a grown up. You do whatever the fuck it's you want. Fucking good, dude. See, look at this. This this is this is what happens though. People feel embarrassed about certain kinds of liquor. I say drink it if you fucking like it. Who gives a we shit? Can take it like a shot. Yeah, fucking rip it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna sip it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back and forth. So I uh, wait on you guys' show. Uh, uh, do you guys drink the whole time, or do you drink? Yeah, dude, I I have to be cautious though, cause I the the producer Matt will send us clips, and it's like I'm like slurring my words in them, and I'm yeah. like, this is fucking humiliating. Yeah, this well, is not... but it's kind of part of the thing. Yeah, I guess so, but uh, 
Ugh, like yeah. you guys get trashed when you do it? Usually we're pretty good. I mean, in the beginning we were it was new. So we were like just getting just fucking get hammered. And then but week by week goes by. Week like, by mm. week, you're like, hey, can we do mojitos this week? You like <laughs> you switch it up. We have a bartender in there and he does he makes he's an amazing Who's this guy? Bartender. Uh Dan. We call him the the beer Jew. But uh Mark just found him and he's he's great. And Where he, do you find this guy? I don't, I think he just, maybe, I'm sure he just DM Craig's Mark list? or something. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark was like, this guy's a bartender. I was like, that's great. Like, let's, we built the bar. We need a bartender. And so he's the beer Jew. We call him the beer Jew. Perfect. Yeah, he's just, he's just a giant. He just looks like Eli Roth. So we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like a big dude. So we're like, fuck it. And then, uh... Yeah, we he makes us like crazy, like corpse reviver number two. The one we had that was incredible is, is called a paper plane. So everyone's like messaging us, like, is what is best? that? It's some whiskey drink, but it's I don't know what's in it even. A paper it's plane, de- it's delicious, dude. And I have to look it up now. It's so good. I mean, we end up just doing like my favorite drinks are like like for cocktails or like Manhattans or like yeah, I do like Manhattans. They're really good. Yeah, my grandmother always had them. Uh, and my, my, <laughs> still like a way you're like cutting me down. Yeah, it was, it's a great drink. It was, it was my grandma <laughs> used to love drinking those. She's 92. She drinks them every day. <laughs> All right. So this is called. This is this is the this is it's the ingredients. Really good. The ingredients for this paper plane are um, uh, one and a half ounces of uh, amaro or uh, preferably nonino. Yeah. Uh, then aperol. So an ounce of aperol, ounce yeah. of bourbon, and an ounce of lemon juice strained. That's pretty. I want to try this. It's really good. I like if I'm doing cocktails. Shit, man, I'll fuck around with a, ma- uh, a martini if he's making them. Like, I'm like, that's a fun way. Martinis are a fun way to get drunk, man. See, that's my fear, though. Like, we went out to this bar. There's a great bar down in um, Palm Springs. If you're ever out there, it's called Mr. Lions. Dude, it's beautiful. It's a p- steakhouse, but... I love a steakhouse oh, bar. Dude, it's such a good bar. I wish I had a photo. But they, it's, it's like this... Um, it's kind of like a very speakeasy vibe, right? It's in the side corner tucked away in the restaurant. So you, the main restaurant is kind of like a typical steakhouse, dark you know, beautiful, like very clean and simple. And then off to the side, there are these hidden kind of doors and it's this little kind of divey, dingy, like um, pressed leather seats uh, and a beautiful patio outside. And we walk in there and we'd already were fucking lit from the other party. I was shit faced. And my buddy goes, I'm buying, what do you want? And I was like, I'll just I'm stick with tequila. Just give me, you know, like a, you know, a tequila on the rocks, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I turn and he's got four fucking martinis. Yeah. And he's like, I wanted to get everybody martinis. I was like, I can't, Ooh. I can't have, mar- if did I'm already you, did drunk. Did you do it or do you? No, fuck no. I get, one, someone else in the party took it. But a martini at a steakhouse is fucking awesome. With like, a steak. Oh my but God. But I'm already shit faced. No, no. I, I can't have a, mar- when I'm drunk, yeah. a martini's going to, I'm going to throw up. I don't want no, no, that's too a, much. That's, I, I, was it dirty or was it uh, dry? It was a gin martini too, which I'm not a big <sighs> fan of. Yeah. I'm a vodka martini guy, Me but too. I'll fuck with a gin martini, man. You <laughs> Once see, in a while. You see Roger Sterling drinking those, like you watch Mad Men, you're like, eh, this looks yeah. kind of fun, man. Yeah, it does. And, and then, but you, then, you know, you have to like, you have to beat your wife and you know what I mean? You have to, <laughs> You have to play the role if you're going to go do it. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't like, when I'm, when I'm drunk, I'm very picky about what yeah. I'm then going to drink because I see it go the other way. Dude, there was a guy at this wedding party that was annihilated. Yeah. Yeah, the, there's always one dude, there's always one dude who gets way too fucked, right? And I felt back. He was a really nice guy. And I see um, <laughs> one of the friends that we're with goes, oh, shit, dude, she's fucking laying it on him. And I turn and he, they're inside the, you know, like inside the reception area or whatever. All you see is her going, oh no! Oh, dude, and he's getting like a battered dog. He's looking down at his shoes. But it's not, you got to wait till the next day. You can't. Oh, she was letting him fucking. Yeah, have it. I don't even know what he did, but she was. That's obviously the best like, time to be verbally abused by your girlfriend when you can't remember it. <laughs> right when you're fucking out of it, he doesn't know what happened. But also for some reason, yeah. it's like when you get that drunk. I don't know how it happens, but like his suit started to not fit him anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like you, he looked. It wasn't a baggy suit, and then for some reason he was so fucked up. It like got baggy, you know. Like it just got. It like like like. That when, might be that might be a bed in there. That's something that could be a stand. Because you know there. what I mean. You no, see, it's, so, it's like their suit yeah, gets yeah. like shitty, and you're like, how yeah. do you? It wasn't shitty before. It looks like uh, he looked like. Um, and I said this uh, last night. He looked like when. Tom Hanks in Big is the kid when in, you know he's wearing the suit you know and he's like and he's walking down that fucking street and he's yeah. like in this huge suit. Oh, that's that's hilarious. what it looked like. He was like shuffling around the party in this like obtusely large suit. A shout out to that dude. He was really fucking nice. He was just having a good time, but you could tell his wife or girlfriend was just. I see that it's I, tough to date someone who gets that shit face, and I'm sure it wasn't the first time. Or like, there's no way. I, I remember dating a girl who used to get that drunk, and it's like you're like. 
now my night's over. Would she get into fights and all that stuff? No, she would just get wrecked. Like, yeah. uh, not be able to talk. I remember we were at a bar one night and she was just like vomiting in the bar. I said, like, I... take her home. I'm like, this is like, I can't do this shit. Yeah, you can't be the puke. Like, puking has to be so rare. If you're puking at bars when you go out, it's tr- you're Well, then you're trouble. in a cab and you're like, is this gonna, is she gonna fuck up this guy's cab? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> this is like a whole, this right. is a whole night. Now, and somebody, dude, this is somebody, uh, I let, where was I? Kansas City, <laughs> I let friend of friend take my Uber. Like, you know, when I was like, you can take it, you know, you can go on, it, oh, drop no. me off. I already don't like where this is going. Well, fucking the next morning, I got up, you know, I don't even know what the bill is. I think it's 250. 250, yeah. Well, you're like, is this, is this, is this, uh, five minute Uber gonna cost me, uh, $10 or 275? Yeah, because right? of, uh, because somebody threw up at the thing. It says cleaning yeah. fee. They automatically send you a cleaning fee, right? So I refuted it and I was like, I did not throw up in your car because they tell you Which in the Which is true. You didn't. No, I did not. Yeah. Correct. But then they, ca- but then, and by the way, these two guys that I, that I just had met through a friend, uh, you know, I, I hit him up and I was like, hey man, did one of you guys fucking puke in the car? No. No, that that's and I, so I refute with Uber. Da 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 da. Finally, one of the dudes fesses up, and he was like, wow. "My bad, dude. I was in there alone. Those guys were gone, and I got to ride back to my, my apartment. And I threw up all the fuck over the Uber." He's like, "I'll Venmo you." Two hundred fifty seems like not even enough for that. I, no, dude, it was enough. I'm like, I'm sure when someone pukes in your fucking car, it's, that's unacceptable. Yeah, no, I was, but dude, I was so mad. I was like, you got to make it out the window. At least get it on the outside. Be an adult. Yeah, throw, throw up outside. And get back in the Uber when you're done. You know I what I mean? I remember I was driving back from a gig with Stavros like years ago, and in, in, we were in uh, D.C., and I made him pull over. I made it to the fucking door. Yeah. Like you're a, good. Like a, like a human like a being. Gentleman, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget, I was outside of a Hofbrau house in Milwaukee, and that's a drinking city. And we're outside, and we're playing this game. They have a tree, a tree trunk, a tree stump, and you take Jesus nails. You know those big fucking huge Jesus nails? You know, you guys know. You know, <laughs> don't you? Oh, we do. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I only know from the other side. Right. <laughs> Your viewpoint's different. <laughs> you take these Jesus nails, and yeah. there's a fucking, this is how Milwaukee this is. Yeah. There's a hammer chained to the tree. Yeah. And you each, you, you have to smash it in, and whoever gets it last flush, you know, whichever one is last, you buy yeah. the round of beer, right? Uh, they let you hit a fucking nail and a hammer at a bar, which, like, already is like, this is a terrible fucking idea. Terrible. But it's a great game, and so whoever gets the last to get it flush has to buy the round. So we're outside, and we're fucking hammered, and we're nailing, and then an Escalade, a big fucking blacked out Escalade, pulls up and slams on the brakes. And we're all like, whoa, what, and my instinct is like, this is not good, because it, it looks like out of a movie when someone's, you know, guns out and just brrr, you know what I mean? Like, it was <laughs> We've shady. seen too many movies, though, Yeah, man. but that's what that feels like when, it, when it's slammed on the brake right out front of the bar. I was like, oh, my God, this is bad. <laughs> the, the back window rolls down. It's yeah. ba- and, and those SUVs, yeah. they only go down, like, three quarters, you know? It rolls down, and I look inside. Everyone's dying laughing, and the dude sitting in that seat leans out the window, just brrr, just all over the side of the fucking Escalade. And they're they're cracking the fuck up. They're losing it. And <laughs> we all start clapping at this dude. Oh. And as he's throwing up, he's going like this. Like, he's celebrating oh. the win. But they were happy that That's he got cool it out of the car. Though. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> we, you knew that, we all knew that kid growing up that, like, just could not hold his shit. I had a friend we oh, called dude. him Sloppy Steve. And uh, this dude, I mean, he earned the nickname. He would just vomit. Every time we drank, we'd go out, he'd get shit-faced and puke everywhere. Like clockwork? Yeah. Clockwork, You're like, dude. He's puking. He's he's. You his, could call it, huh? His best move was he came home drunk one night when we were in college, and he uh, he pissed all over his laptop. He was just drunk, and he just pissed on Dude, his I've laptop. Dude, I've heard of people doing this. It's so weird. I know guys that have peed in their closet. Have you ever seen her? Like, they'll yeah. wake up, and they'll walk into their closet and piss in it. It's like half sleepwalking, I think, too. It's like something something is off. But he sent it to Apple, thinking they would fix it. <laughs> they returned it in a plastic bag, like, nope. This yeah. is this is, We're not touching And, like, good for them. You pissed on it, dude. Like how did it happen? Oh, I was blacked out. I pissed. <laughs> I pissed all over it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're not. We're definitely not fixing your piss computer. We're not computer. touching this. Yeah. The guy that's cleaning our or cleaning. The guy that's <clears throat> helping. I'm redoing a part of my house. We had to fucking like gut out a bathroom, and the pipes <laughs> and the pipe broke. And this dude, this yeah. poor fucking dude, he's out front hosing off, and he's like, "Yeah, man, it was a fucking pipe break." And I was like, "Oh shit." He's like, "Yeah, tree roots." And I was like, "I'm so sorry, man." And he's like. I've got your piss and your shit all over me. Oh. I was like, I'm sorry, dude. I was like, it makes you feel better. It's a lot of people. <laughs> We've had a lot of friends come over the last couple of days. He was so fucking bummed. He's like, it broke right on him. So he was hosing oh. himself off. Yeah, oh. dude, it was a bummer. I felt so bad for the guy. But then I was also like, you were fucking with the pipes. <laughs> like, it's I don't your know. Fault, dude. I don't know, man. It's on you. 
It's like yeah. that scene in Shawshank when he's cracking through the <laughs> shit pipe and you're like, I mean, you knew shit was going to yeah. come out. Like you were, yeah. if you broke it, it was going to come out. Sorry. And you know bud. what? You're free. You, uh, yeah, he's free now. The, the, I remember I had a kid growing up, my friend Adam, he was like fucking hilarious guy, but like one of those dudes that's like smart in all the wrong ways. Like he was like a chess genius. He was ranked like number two in the country at chess. Really? Yeah. It's amazing. But then he just like used it to like become a drug addict and go to Washington uh, Square Park and hustle people. I like that guy. So it's, it was fun, but it was also like... The King's Gambit, that one would be called. <laughs> the King's Gambit, the remake. He plays, uses chess for fucking, just to get some H. I like that. I'll watch that movie. He, he's one of those dudes that like became a degenerate gambler. Like anytime I had a gig at a casino, he would just be there. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would just like walk into Mohegan Sun. He'd be like, what's up, dude? And I'd be like... Did you see the show? He's like, of course I saw the fucking show. <laughs> That's sad, He just dude. figured, he'd be like, yeah, well, hang. And he was like, look, it was a fun hang. But he was also, he got a little better, but there was a period where he was like the worst drunk. He was like a thin kid, and then the next, you see him like a couple years later, he's got like the fat drunken face. Oh, and yeah, swollen. Swollen, swollen had, as hell. And swollen had sad, man. But he, he was a funny, bad drunk. Like, not, it was embarrassing, but it was, fun. like, I remember one time we were in this shithole dive bar, and he's just off his ass drunk, and I was trying to get him home, because he was such a mess, and yeah. we're, like, 19 or something, yeah. maybe younger, who the fuck, maybe 17, the honestly. The good old days. 17, maybe, just fake IDs in the bar, and, and <laughs> we're trying to get him out of there, and he won't leave. He's, like, one of those proud blackout drunks, oh, yeah. where he's like, I want another beer, and the woman's like, sir, you have to leave, and, and he goes... Give me a beer, you bitch. And then he leans on a stool and just falls over. And you're like, this is... <laughs> it's a cartoon. <laughs> it's, it becomes kind of funny. Yeah, you know? you're like, this Homer Simpson thing is very funny. <laughs> Give me a beer, you bitch. <laughs> Dude, we, I ha I've had friends that... Well, I have friends that like just can't... In England, yeah. I, we were in partying in England. This dude, I'll never forget, dude. He was, he, he was smiling. Yeah. Seen Brian Brian and his arms were up high. The bar was really high, and he was like slunched over the bar. Yeah, he was like half asleep. And I was like, Come on, man, you got to go home, dude. You're fucking, you're, you know. And he starts smiling. Yeah. I'm like, What are you smiling about? And he just turns to my buddy Tyler and he goes, I'm fucking pissing right now. <laughs> and I back up and I look, his dick is out and he's peeing underneath oh, the bar. I was like, fuck. Dude, stop. And also, he got away with it. Nobody knew. It was like so dark and such Damn. a packed bar. <laughs> Nobody knew this kid. We took him out. It's not like they kicked him out. Yeah, Ugh. pissing at the bar. And apparently, uh, according to my friend, he was like, he does that. He'll do that. He likes pissing at the bar. Damn. Yeah, he wants to he wants to get kicked the fuck out because it's like his fuck. It, some guys get that moment when they get drunk that they're like, fucking fight me. You know, like they want the trouble. I'm the opposite. Those if are, I get too fucked, worst, I go home. I leave. Nobody yeah. knows. I Irish goodbye. If I'm too fucked up, I disappear. Well, into those the night. are dudes you want to get punched in the face. Like, yeah, they love the that's fight. That's their thing, is like they're like, I hate myself. I want someone to hit me. And it's fight like, me. cool. Well, you started a fight with a bunch of big dudes and yeah. it's just us. And so, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm not fighting these fucking guys. <laughs> oh, I've had those friends where they just start shit. Where they're Roping just, you in. Oh my God. Where you're just like at a bar at like 3 a.m. And you have that drunk friend who just says something to a guy. He turns out to be a bodybuilder, and I'm like, "Hey, man, neither of us have the frame to handle this, dude." <laughs> yeah, dude. And now I'm, and now I have to be the peacemaker. Like, dude, please, like. And I, then you become a bitch for no reason. That you're like, I'm just trying to not fight. I'm just trying to not get you killed and me killed by you right. know being your friend by the CrossFit guy in the fucking bar who's like, "This is my one night to drink. This is my <laughs> keto drinking night. I'm gonna get fucking wrecked." The dude who dork just, up. He just started taking jujitsu. He's dying to try and move on you. You're like, fuck. <laughs> Those guys, I know these guys, by the way. You see that everyone is taking jujitsu now. I oh. feel like it's sweeping all my friends. Every friend I have wants to do jujitsu. Yeah. And only two of them are probably good at it. You know? Like the other guys, you're like, you're fat. You're not. They have gonna to be good. try and move on you. There's a rule. Once you start jujitsu, your friend will try and move on you. 100%. Yeah. They yeah. Have you ever done that shit? Have you ever tried? No. Yeah, me neither. I can't. I, I just, I know I'm not going to be a fighter. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point? I'll just, I'll just use my words. <laughs> and if I get my ass kicked, I wasn't going to win anyway. Did you ever get your ass kicked as a kid? Not not bad, but it was usually just like a friend who was tougher than me and we were drunk and it was never like a stranger who beat the shit out of me, but like it was usually friends, a friend. Friends, yeah. yeah. Friend fights are the beginning fights. Uh yeah. no, I've been fucking smacked around. I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, like I've been in some some laws. College was scumbaggery. It was like drinking and people would talk shit and then you're always gonna defend your buddy and yeah. It's just it became I, I hated the culture of it all because it was it's so awful. bro bro, and it's, and it's never over anything important. No, it's bullshit. It's <laughs> drunk guy bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I'll never forget, dude. At this, <laughs> at this birthday party, this is ooh, I was twenty three or something. I just moved out here. 
but this guy showed up to this party that this other guy fucking hated, right? And he's like, they're talking shit and they're chirping a little bit, but it's like at a party, so it was like short, it was short and quick, like, hey, all right, man, go fuck yourself, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then, dude, I mean, it was maybe the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. One of the guys that I'm talking about was with me this weekend, but the dude goes up to him and he's getting in his face and he's like, he's like, well, then fucking do it then, bitch. Then fucking do it. And he, of course, does. The guy he fucking smokes him in the face. Is your friend who gets hit? The, they're all kind of my friends, but the, the, the closest guy to me is really close with the guy who got smoked, uh. right? So he, and he's not a tall guy, <laughs> he jumps through the air. I'm not kidding. He was parallel to the earth. I mean, he was like, it was like those, like Superman when you're flying, he's flying parallel and he jumps and tries to hit this kid and he fucking misses by like a mile. He misjudged all of it. So you see this little dude just float and then slam on the fucking uh. ground. But he bounced up so fast because he knew he missed. And then it was like, then the scuffle broke out. But I am tears in my, I've never had, because you know when a fight starts, you're like, oh shit. And your senses go straight up. And yeah, you're like yeah. looking around, what like, who's going to fucking throw a punch? What's next? I was in, te I've never laughed during a fight like this. I, w I couldn't stop laughing because I watched his whole body bounce off of the fucking tile. <laughs> he popped back up, looking to fight someone. And I was like, bro, it's over. Yeah. Sit down. You can't swing and miss and then keep, and, be and everyone see it and then keep trying to fight. You're like, dude, take a fucking seat cool off because your head hit the fucking tile hard that's like the one good thing about getting older is that shit just doesn't happen no, like you it no, no older people are like you want to fucking go They're like nah we have herniated discs we're tired i do yeah. right now i Me literally too. do it's oh awful my God, dude i it's do all, it's it does it fuck with you a lot yeah i talked about it on this i have a pars fracture do you know what that is i have no. a stress fracture in my fucking back they uh, showed me the break it's insane i got something going to my neck it yeah sucks. neck is a big one mine is in my fucking low, my lower back from like running and shit and the guy was like do you do any impact sports i'm like dude i'm no i'm, I'm 40 i'm, I'm no i haven't done impact not since you know i haven't played anything impact in but 20 run. years That's impact. yeah but i'm thinking you know back when i played basketball a lot i was yeah. like you know that could have done it and he was like no he's like truly it's the, the the compression of running and jumping and i was like that's fucking that's what did this he's like getting older dude this is just like a part of the thing I was like, yeah. fuck, man. It was such a bummer. And I had to go through PT. I'm still in it. it yeah, sucks. I did it too. I didn't do shit. And PT is PT is good um, for discipline and regimen of training. That's all yeah. it is. If you get a good PT, that's just it's basically just getting a uh, uh, this really went. This really went in a hilarious direction. This went from bar fights to like, here's the good thing about physical guys. therapy. <laughs> <laughs> here's one of the perks. Yeah. Is, uh, dude, I yeah. sound like one of those guys now because I'm like stretch. Every young person oh, I'm like, stretch, please stretch. Dude. Yeah, please oh, I stretch. do it. I'll be watching. It's so sad. You're watching like I used to be the dude in the couch like this fucking player sucks. Now I'm literally watching sports like let me just get that right dude, there. Dude, stretching. Yeah. That's what I do. It's so yeah. sad. I'll stretch all day long. Also, any young guys out there that think that it's not you, I can't fucking wait till it happens. You will be humbled. Yeah. 22 year olds, wait till you throw your fucking back out and it's the worst pain you've ever had in your and, fucking life. And the hangovers get worse too, dude. Yeah, they don't end. I'm still sitting in one right now. I'm, well, that's and, why you're having a drink though, right? Yeah, you have to take a little bit of hair off, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's something about it that levels you back to square Just a one. little. Yeah, but I thought, and last night we ate late night. We made smash burgers. My boy Jimmy made smash burgers. I love those. <sighs> Me too, man. And I thought, I was drunk, and but I wasn't like blacked out, but I was drunk enough where I was like, we should eat something now so that in the morning, it'll at least gut soak up this shit you know what i mean and then That's i'll just move didn't work because <laughs> i woke up and i was way worse than i was last night really yeah man i felt like shit we were also it was drinking in the sun it was hot i think it was just too much too much day sun it's funny party. when people are like you don't drink enough water you're like it's gonna happen anyway like you know yeah. like no matter oh, I'm, I'm also a coffee i've had like three coffees already today i'm a coffee drinker man like me i too. need i need and so it's like everything i like just dehydrates me you yeah, know it's me like too. yeah every good thing my only things, my two vices are alcohol and coffee. Yeah. That's my, it. And coffee for me got way worse as over time because now I've become like so used to first thing in the morning for sure, then usually in the afternoon. Then sometimes if I'm on the road or shows or I've got stuff going on, I'll have oh, another dude. one too. Night coffee? I know. I, I kind of like it. I feel like a, a PI. <laughs> it's kind of cool, <laughs> Solving right? Solving a case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is funny. My grandmother, me and my mom were just talking about this. My grandmother used to, the only image I have is her in the kitchen smoking, drinking cups of coffee, and eating something. There was always food out. There was always a thing. She was a big woman, dude. She was a big lady. And uh, she always was smoking and drinking coffee. And she would make a pot of coffee in the morning, wreck it by noon, and then make another Do you make, make your own coffee one. or do you go out for it? 
50 50, right? Like if I'm. It's, if, nice, it's satisfying to make your own. I bird, would rather though. make it. But yeah. if I'm on the run and I have shit going on, sure, it stinks. Usually sure. I have to get out of the house. But my, there's nothing better than making coffee at home. The ritual, the ritual is very satisfying. I got that grind and brew thing at home. So it like kind of does the, the beans fresh. Love and it. Slips it up. I love that. Love that. Dude. It makes me so happy. Yeah, me too. I like the noise. Yeah. There's the noise about, is nice. Yeah, because you're like, oof, I'm about to, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm getting the reward very, very soon. I do, I do have become, uh, I become someone that likes coffee at night more because I just think like it was something my parents used to do. Like yeah. I remember growing up seeing the adults have coffee in the evening yeah. after dinner and it, I, you romanticized it a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's nice. like a thing that it's you like. It's like one more round. That was like the equivalent dessert and coffee. That's yeah. like the adult thing. It is cool. There is something about it. But also then again, my doctor was like, man, you should definitely not be having four cups of coffee a day. I know, but then there's New York Times articles that are like five, like four to five is good. It's like, there's always coffee articles that are like, this is actually good. And you're like, here we go. Right. Or now the new thing is uh, people are drinking all, all the, the alternatives now is what all my friends are into, like matcha like, instead of coffee in the morning. Or people like, like matcha. Or the mud thing. You know this mud thing? You know what this is? It's really good. I've never had it. It's good? I've, I don't have that, but I have, I think it's like this is like, we like, my girlfriend loves matcha. So we so yeah. she always gets that. I have that at home. But then um yeah, like this it's, it's called a, like shroom drink. Yeah, it's There's mushrooms. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. so fucking good. Is it? I mean, I'm not going to drink it and I'm going to have coffee too, but like end of the day it's kind of like I'm like it's taste it's like every, it's like cinnamon and pepper. It's like nice spice. But if you I had like it in the morning, it. would it give you the same No. Bump? No, no see? I coffee is it's not for me it's not a coffee substitute. For me it's like an added another thing. No, no, no. I I've had things. I've had ulcers and shit where you're like you can't drink coffee for, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can give up alcohol so much more easily than coffee. Same. Just due to our schedules. Yeah, you, know? you could tell me I couldn't have this anymore if they were like, hey, it's a health thing. I'd be like, all right, fine, that's that's the end of that. But if they're like, you can't have coffee, I'm like, in the not one. Do I remember going to diners with Dave Attell at like we'd leave at like four thirty in the morning, and he would leave with a giant iced coffee. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's that guy. <laughs> he's, he is the image that I think he is. He is the coffee. He drinks yeah. his coffee always. Is he still doing the cellar every night, or I mean, most nights? I should I'm say. I'm not there much anymore because of the road. But yeah. uh, when I'm there, yeah, I see him there. He's. I just saw him in uh, Moon Tower. He did the festival. He did like the big theater there, and I watched him get it. Watch him get a standing ovation. He gets off stage. He's like classic David Tell, where he's like, he's like, he's like, what was that? Or like, cla like not even feeling good about himself after a, a standing ovation. And the jokes were incredible. He's he's the best comic I've ever seen. So funny, man. But he, but I'm I'm glad that he's got that kind of uh, self doubt and humility. Otherwise, he's so humble. Probably wouldn't be a good comic. Probably, but you, but it's to the point where you're like, you want to have a little more because he's so great, you know. No, I think it's kind of nice. Maybe. I like, Maybe, but I, that's who he is, and that's kind of what makes the engine that way. Do you know what I mean? There's something about it that you're like, maybe that's exactly why he works so well with himself. Yeah, but I think that shit hurts other elements of your life when you, when sure. you, don't, when you don't like yourself, you yeah. know? Yeah, it does, but I mean, you know, I don't know. That's, at stand, -up, stand up is forever going to be the thing where you're going to, you're never going to be satisfied with any of the things that you've done because you For always sure. want to make them better. So I get it so much that like kind of the tortured soul of him is why not that's not the reason why he's great, but I think it's a reason of, of his greatness. The reason why he's such a comics comic because yeah. he's so he keeps it so just himself. Like there's no there's no like I'm the best. Check this shit out. You know, it's not, yeah. none of that. Like it, it's comics love great comics who are humble, and that's what he is. Yeah, there's something about it that turns us on. Now the fuck in the comedy world is like. Uh, the game has changed of like everything is online, everything's getting bigger and bigger and like, you know, I was joking about fucking Schultz is, is gonna, I think Schultz is gonna light a guy on fire in his show next month. What? No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. fucking... I believed it. No, like, I that's how things are no, going. No, but he's but, but he, like Pyro and all this stuff, it's like the comedy game is now becoming such a bigger show than it ever was. Yeah. Which is wild to me to see. It's like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm the slow old guy. That's like, what are they doing out there? Like, I it's strange. Yeah, that's natural. I, I mean, know. I mean, it feels it feels like I'm like, oh my god, do I have to fucking catch up? Because everybody puts their shit online, which is great. And I, I already I, am I like, do it. I already am more attracted to like old timey. Like I like watching movies from like the '40s. I like that's what I like. You're an so, old timey guy. I I like old movies. I like yeah. when the script mattered. I like uh, I like old timey comedy. So yeah, it's it's tough to stay current. But like, fuck, I also like. I'll be on TikTok and I'm like, this is kind of funny too. Like, I, I do. I fuck with TikTok. I, I see a lot fun. of people rejecting it because it's new, but I also am like, you know, it feels kind of good to just see a guy like you're talking about Smash Burgers. These TikTok chefs, I fucking love it. Dude. Me too. Me I, too. I love it. There's a guy with a hibachi from Chicago that I really like. Dude, here's the deal. 
I'm consciously trying. We all we all are to not sound like our dad, who was like, you know what I mean? Who was like, yeah. Tupac's rap sucks. And you're like, <laughs> like, it's so easy for me to do that with sure. whatever it is. So TikTok is, is the best example that when somebody's like, aren't you old to be scrolling through TikTok? You're like, I think it's fucking hilarious. I think there's wonderful the, elements the of it. The only trap is when you're there like too long, because I think it's like turning your brain to mush. But it like, is. if you do it like, like, a, like, a, like a sugary treat, right? it's not nutrition. But so you can't be there too long. But if you're just using it, like otherwise, if you're just on that shit, you're gonna crash and you're gonna be like, "Fuck, I'm my day." Yeah, they you know? feel like shit. It is true. I've sometimes I've sat on a shitter and I've realized I've already been done shitting for 20 minutes, and I'm just scrolling through the internet, fumble because I don't really fumble through Instagram anymore. I don't give a fuck. Instagram has become the thing that I almost do the least now. Yeah, I post once every week or two. I, I just feel like I have to post for dates, always just, like, trying to make sure I think I should. I know I should. Yeah, you don't post that much on Instagram. I don't like it. I don't give a fuck about it. I think yeah. it's annoying. I don't like the platform. I don't like the the showmanship of it. It's such a show offy thing. It's yeah. not even pleasurable anymore. It's more like, oh, this is, it's it's a little gross. It's gross. Yeah, so tic, so that's almost like the- TikTok's free. It's almost Instagram like, has become Facebook. Correct. And Twitter has become like an insane asylum <laughs> yeah. where, where yeah. people are just like in straight jackets like, I had a bad day. And you're like, all right. Uh, and you know who I'm going to talk shit about? Everybody on here. And they just at people they don't like anymore. I don't know. I just think it's, it's yeah. the toxicity so level TikTok is TikTok is kind of pleasurable because it's liter- it's just like people that are like, this is how you make a Wagyu steak, like whatever. Love that you know, shit. I love it. And they Fuck do it, it and they cut jump cut it so it's like slit slit dot dot just, just, the production I, value. Oh, I fucking love it. I mean it's hilarious when people complain. I'm like, this is all free, you idiots. Yeah. You didn't have to do anything but open your fucking phone. Because people think time is money now. They really do think, like, my time is money. I'm like, you're not shit. <laughs> you're on a fucking <laughs> you're on a fucking amazing device that yeah. some kid made for you. And you're complaining that fucking, that your life is bad? Bullshit. Because so, someone wasted 30 seconds of your time with them. It's amazing the entitlement people have. Yeah. Our lives are fucking amazing. Yeah, granted, this uh, social media stuff is going to have a negative impact on our, on our mental health. Yeah, it's killing us, for it's sure. It's killing us. Yeah. But it's fun. But it's fun. Yeah. But, it's, but honestly, also like anything else, uh, you know, that, like that corny phrase of like, you can't take it with you, the same with money. It's like, yeah, you got to spend a little bit of money and have some fucking fun. For sure. Because it's going to go away. So yeah, I don't know, my brain is going to mush anyway. Like, at least I'll get some funny videos out of it once in a while on the shitter. You know, like, I, I do like it. I, I know it's, and it's become addicting. At first I was like... I'm not going to get involved with that thing. And I still don't really understand it. Like, I'll have videos on there that we put up of clips of like this or Bad Friends or 9 million views. Or like Amazing. 12 mi- I know, but somebody once was like, um, uh, we were in Houston or something, and some some dude was like, uh, um, one of the comics was like, oh, do you turn on the creator fund? I was like, what is that? He's like, you get paid when those videos. And I was like, oh, really? Yeah, I just heard about that. Well, so I turned it on or whatever, which activated it. But it's bullshit because I was like, I wonder if a million, millions of views does anything, but it was like 30 bucks or something. I, I was know. Like, oh, like, this isn't real. <laughs> so yeah, I was yeah. Like, no, it's like Spotify where you have like a hit record and you make like- A hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the fuck it is. I just got a sound exchange check. Oh, they're killing you. Yeah. They're all killing us. It's and then bullshit. I, I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I, I did not work through my deals very well. Me neither. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, but I was a, young. I, I got yeah. a Comedy Central record deal. When I was, yeah, we're owed a lot of money. Yeah, I know, dude. I was like twenty five or something, twenty six when I got uh, uh, when I di- uh, said yes to doing my first album or something like that with them, and then I don't know if I've ever seen money from that. Yeah, like, yeah. ever, That's, ever, ever. It's illegal. Yeah, what they're doing is illegal. Yeah, there's yeah they scare they fucked us they fucked <laughs> us bad. <laughs> Viacom's got me by the balls. Yeah, but I should look into it because I do hear people that are yeah, like, yeah, no, it's a thing. Other albums, we should we should be looking into it. So, so you know more, huh? Oh, you, you I, feel we'll it. talk off air. Oh fuck, okay. We're, we're digging into this because we're owed money. Wow, dude, it's funny because yeah. I always kind of thought you know when I was a you're a younger comic and you're like this is and they tell you too like this is how it goes and you're like well fuck all right you know that was like when i played gigs and i'm like an r&b group in the 60s with this deal you should look at it it ain't good it's that it's like that yeah holy fuck man maybe i need to look at it yeah, now because yeah, yeah. i'm really curious off air we're gonna talk we're the, we're the temptations <laughs> <laughs> fuck we're i'm one of the guys in the four seasons who they kicked out <laughs> like listen dude frankie doesn't like you anymore i'm like wait what it's my voice it's like nah man Com- you gotta comedy fuck central off. is a uh, hesh from the sopranos <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Dude, it is funny how many people did get fucked in the in the music industry that I'm friends with over the years, and they tell me how shady that is. In the, yeah. in the and Fahim, you know Fahim Anwar, you yeah, know, I love him. phenomenal. He's, yeah, He's yeah. got a great joke about that about girls in the background of '90s rap. Uh, you know, like the girl that was like, yeah, that's my rap. You know, whatever the fuck. And he's like, no credit, no money. Like, they just made them sing and they were like, get the fuck out of here. But they're like a staple of those songs. Oh, that LL Cool J saw doing it and doing, doing it and doing it. And that it, right. woman's not even in the video. They got like a hotter woman <laughs> they in the got video. Else. So fucked up. It's so fucked She's up. She's singing. She's got the good voice. Right, right. And Give like, her the shine, man. Get her out of here, man. No. By the way, that video was 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 so pornographic. I yeah. vividly remember he's eating an apple watching in a in one of those sex uh you know what I'm talking about? Where like the door yeah, goes yeah. up and it's a hot chick dancing and then closes again. Yeah. Music videos. Kids, music videos were when we were young. <laughs> those still do well. Honestly, I can't believe there isn't a rehashing of music videos being pushed around. Yeah, like, yeah. they'll end up on Vivo on YouTube, and like I they see get them hundreds of millions of views. Yeah, but it's just the culture of it was different. It yeah. was almost like it was culturally so oh my relevant. God, Carson Daly, fuck me, man. Oh my god, when so they, when be like the top ten videos of the week, and you'd be like, well, is it going to be Third Eye Blind again? <laughs> like, you remember that? You're like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, Sugar Ray. If I hear Rob Thomas and Santana one more fucking time, <laughs> or whatever it was, Meredith me- Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane how that culturally did shift my youth though it was so important to like n- see those videos and then when i talked to kids who didn't have cable like if you ever talked to someone that didn't have fucking cable like no nah, i never saw music videos i was like that's insane oh, a pop-up video oh my god a- vh1 and M- i worked for that is v- guy is vh1 even a channel anymore uh i think so i mean i think they still who do you work for the guy that invented pop-up video whoa one of my first jobs in hollywood when i moved out here I got like a hosting job, you know, it was like uh, a daily update show on like MSN and, oh, the, wow. and the numbers were insane. This was all, this was 2009 and the numbers were fucking insane. Like they showed me, it was like 6.7 million views what? on a video. Right back then I was confused, but this was the funniest part. I was like, how are we getting that many clicks or views? And I, I, there was no way to gauge traffic because Instagram was like brand new at the time. So there was no way to be like, am I getting any fans from this maybe or something? And he was like, oh, no, dude, no, no, no. We are the first video that plays on MSN's homepage. So people that bought PCs at the time, MSN homepage was their homepage, and they didn't know how to change the browser homepage. So the video would play. But that's incredible, though. I know. I was like, oh, my God. That's, it, was, it, was, you know, it was a job that I did for two years. It was fucking It was like the first job I ever had that gave me money in order to quit my day job. But... um. The guy who invented Papa Video, it was his company that I worked for. Wow. And dude, he did that and made so much fucking money off of just that. Just Papa Video, he turned it into a massive company, a, a production company that did like, you know, other bullshit shows. That's what Hollywood is, dude. Sell something big once, you're set for the rest of your fucking life. You just have to sell one big thing like those guys did in that era, and they all, that was it. It was amazing because we would do, like, I remember I did a sports show on MSG, which was, like, the Knicks channel and the Rangers. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's right. The funniest part was you would we would just be playing in bars. Like, every bar. So, are they like, we got good ratings last night. I'm like, yeah, on mute. Right, right, in the background. We got good ratings on mute. (laughs) You're behind a golden tee somewhere. (laughs) Some dude is like, who this fuck, who's this Jew in the garden? Yeah. (laughs) That is so funny to think that they would just loop stuff like that. It is, it's like airplane shit. It's like background stuff that got played. That was the beginning. And then at the same time, I had a meeting to do a show for them um, with Vin DeBonis Company. Do you know who that is? No. No, you wouldn't. I didn't know either. He's the guy that uh, did America's Funniest Home Videos. Oh, wow. The guy that made, you know, $90 billion off one show that still is running today with my boy Alfonso Ribeiro, who's a great guy, that guy, That guy is underrated. He's the shit. Because he is, I mean, like, He's a great comic actor. Yeah, like, he's shit. fucking great. Yeah. Why, why was he not on more shit? Uh, Will Smith is a big th- name, and I think it was like he took Will, prob- like a big tree that soaks up all the water. It was like he was the superstar of that I, show. I love Will Smith too, but like shit, I, that whole cast, like the yeah. dad was great. Uncle Phil, bro. All right, um, P. No, that it, it was. Did he die? Yeah, Uncle Phil's dead. Fuck. Come on, man. Come on. I don't we know. We all went to the funeral, man. Fuck. Louis did a set. Bird did a which, set. Which on Viv was there? <laughs> they, <laughs> they had to slug it out in the parking lot. That was so fucked. But yeah. no, Afonso, he's a good dude. He's actually become kind of a buddy, for real. Yeah. He, dude, he's a great comic he's actor. A, he, dude, he's great, man. And Carlton he's a, had cool the dude. Mo- that was like, 
an incredible character. The waspy black guy. That who, he he carved out really. Like it was written, but not like that. Like, but dude, like they had like heavy moments on that show. Yeah. That was like my childhood. I loved Me Fresh too. Prince. Yeah, Fresh man. Prince was the fucking best, dude. Yeah, no, Fon- he Fonzo does that show. Al does that show, um, and it's still running after all these years. And I remember meeting with that Vindabona company, and they were nice people, and they were talking about archive footage that they had, and they wanted to do something new with it. And they were like, yeah, we want to do, like, comedy videos with it, but we're not sure what we want to do. Like, at the time, they were like, we're trying to figure it out, you know, talk to comics and writers and people and figure it out. But I remember being like, man, is this building a vault filled with VHS tapes sent in? And he was like, yeah, it is. Wow. Because when you send in a tape, I don't know if they still do this, but back in the day, you signed over to say, like, not only do, do you, you're giving them access to use the tape at their own discretion during the course of the show, you have no guarantee that's going to be shown. And uh, we logged the footage and keep it in perpetuity for the rest of time. So he owned outright, you know, hundreds of millions of hours of just tape footage of people's private family fucking tapes. Isn't that, that crazy? they've sent in. Well, that's also like before camera phones. That's crazy to get someone getting a football in the nuts or something before, <laughs> like, you had to have, like set up a fucking thing. How? You yeah. need a tripod? Capturing those moments is impossible. I can't do it with an iPhone and it's way yeah. more accessible. You can, they got those moments on VHS was Unreal. wild to me. Yeah, 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 dude. I think it's crazy what that guy did. And then he amassed this collection of, you know. That I guy, that guy should know. get a piece of TikTok. For, yeah, that he guy, fucking that should. That guy's a fucking groundbreaking dude. Yeah, he should. He should get the uh, uh, Medal of Freedom or Honor or whatever the fuck we give to people. <laughs> I, thought, I, th- I thought I saw something. Trump said he wanted to recall a medal that was given away while he was in office. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. Oh, I didn't know what it was. But he like, you know. It's so funny. He pokes his little head back in because he misses being at the party so much, you know. Once in a while, he pretends gonna, like I'm he sure he'll out. run again. I don't know, dude. Honestly, I was thinking about that really? the other day. Yeah, I don't think so. I think at this point, the endeavors of business are so, so strong. I think it would be just be so were. much more fun to not be president. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. To just be, it, I think it would be better to just be a rich dude than the president. But he was that for so long. So that for him, it's kind of like. I think he just wanted to see if he could do it and just prove that he could fucking do it. Oh, the night it. he won, he looked shocked. Yeah. Because the whole media was like, you're going to lose badly. And then he was just like, oh, uh, all right. He's like, we won? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Did you Did know you that guy? The, the, huh, uh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, they have like a new Netflix show. It's like the Comey Files. And I'm like, can we give it a minute? Really? Dude, yeah, it's like a fucking, it's Jeff Daniels playing James Comey. No shit. And that great actor, uh, Brendan Gleeson, is playing Trump. And it's a good Trump. But you're like, I'm not ready. You got to give 20. They used to give this like 20 years. Yeah, they did. And when, I, when they made 9-11 movies like three years after 9-11, I was like, fuck you. Because <laughs> this got pitched like a week later. Yeah. You know? Okay, the plane thing that just happened. Let, just hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> well, it's like it's like fucking, what's it called? Uh, like Gabby Petito's missing. You know Netflix and Hulu. Got it. Already, uh, HBO, they're already like taking meetings like who's got the best uh, foot? Who, which one of you is Mike Dub Dog the bounty hunter? Because <laughs> one of you. <laughs> who can play Brian Laundry? Who in here? Who, Aaron Paul? Fine, we'll go with Aaron Paul. You know they do. That's of course how they yeah, fucking he think. Could, he could play Brian Laundry. I know, that's the first thing I thought of Damn. when I saw him. I'm like, he could, that could be Aaron fucking Paul. Who could play her? He says bitch a lot, but you know what? Given the context, it kind of works. <laughs> it's perfect. He is a murderer. Yeah. So. Did they catch this dude? Is he dead? What's no, his deal? No, dude. I mean, they say he's on the Appalachian Trail, I think, but uh, it's hilarious that Dog the Bounty Hunter just showed up. I think that's the funniest. Like, I don't think anyone yeah. hired him. I think he just showed up. Yeah, he did. Well, he wants to bounce back from that- uh, The N-word. The N-word trouble. Yeah. You say the N-word, you got to have some sort of recuperation. <laughs> you got to recoup some of that loss. He's, he's got to go out. He's like, I'm getting killers he now. Lost, he lost his wife, so I'm sure that like people oh, were what, like- Oh, what? Did she die? She died, yeah. Oh, she did? Yeah. Oh, I think I do remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fucked. Well, then, so you, you knew get, about Uncle Phil, but not Dog's wife? Come on. Come on, man. One of those two is really important to my life. <laughs> By the way, I do think if your wife does die tragically, you do get one N-word. You get to say just yeah, one. one. Yeah, yeah, you get one. Let sure. him have one. Let I him mean, bounce I back. I mean, you don't have to use it, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. It's near. It's in his pocket. Let him have it. That is really... That is fucked up that he did, like, join that fight. I just am not into murder. Like, that happens on TikTok, you don't like, too. You don't like murder mystery stuff. Like, yeah, murder podcasts. You don't like... You never saw, like, The Jinx, though. That was a great one. I watched that, but... That, that was, was great. cultural. It was like everyone was talking about it. Like I and like the it was staircase. Like, that I was like, incredible. Yeah, the but, staircase is incredible. But now when we get two good, like good stories, then you have a thousand of these kind of like throw away ones where I'm like, I don't fucking. And they don't have to be twelve episodes. No, I love a four episode one. Give me four. Shh, knock it down. Yeah, knock yeah. it down. Like I just saw one on TikTok that I'd seen before about. 
this guy who's left his wife for a stripper. Yeah. No, 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 for a for a for a prostitute, for a call girl. So he's call he gets a call girl, his wife is gone. Seven months later, he divorces his wife of eight years, gets with this girl. N- no, no, no more than one year later, um, there's footage of her crying because the cops are outside of her house. The the call girl or the wife? The call girl. And the, she's like, the wife is gone. The wife's out of the picture. And the, the, she's crying and she's like, uh, the cop's like, your, your husband is dead. And he's been shot. And she's bawling. But you knew something was wrong. And you're sure. like, they put her in an interrogation room. And then in walks the husband, and he's like, "I'm not dead. You thought I was gonna be fucking dead? Wow! Cause I already love she this. tried to she ha- she tried to have him killed. She hired a hitman to fucking clip him for a life insurance policy, and the hitman was an undercover cop. Wow! I heard about this. See, yes. but this is great. But this, give this to this me in that like, short. I just want it like that quick. That's, that's it. That's awesome. I don't need a drawn out 19 episode. Just give me the bu- give me the give me the cliffs notes of all of that's them. That's incredible see to hire a guy. Oh, what a fucking! And he walks in. And that's he, like the opposite of catfishing or something. That's <laughs> like I don't know what that is, but that's awesome. It was fucking wild to see her face oh. when she saw that he was alive, and she's like, "I didn't do anything to you." It's so fucked but up. But he and, knew. Damn. Well, they have the fo- they showed him the footage of her talking to the undercover. What's the, cop. What's the sentence for something like that? Hiring sixteen a, years. Wow. Which I thought was high. Yeah. Not that it's. I'm not trying to say she should get less, but I was like. I feel like less crimes have gotten, I mean, worse crimes have gotten less time. I feel like murder, you get like 20 years. I guess it depends. On the like level hiring of Hiring someone to murder your husband, like, holy shit. It's fucked up. That is insane. 16 years, yeah, she got 16 years. Without, without, did he get back with, with the ex wife? Without parole. You bet he did. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, take me back. I'm done with that fucking crazy hooker who tried what to kill me. What the hell? Yeah, nuts. That's, and that's why you don't fucking wifey uh, up a call girl, man. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. What are you doing? What, what are, you, are do? you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Some guy that's listening that's a big fan just married a call girl. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, dude? I thought we had something. I'm that a fan. Is, that is crazy. That that could, that's almost like could be a movie right there. That's so. I mean, that's the like, twist is is fucking sick though. And they show her the footage of her talking about being like, "Well, it's like you know whatever." Da, da, and then he's like, "How do you want me to do it?" You know, like they're trying to really pull it wow. out of her. Wow. And what'd yeah. she say? How'd she want? She's she- dancing around it a little bit, which is interesting because then you're like, "Oh, this is because she's still sketched out by it." Like she doesn't outright want to be like, "Shoot him you in think, the fucking head." You think the punishment is less if you're like. Whatever you want to do, as opposed to shoot him in the head. Like, it's the same shit. Right. The judge is just like, let's review the tape. But she's like, kill him nicely, wrap him up and something. The judge is like, well, she was vague. So, you know, that's cool. And she was sweet about it. She said, don't shoot him in the head. Open cat. We'd like to have an open casket. It is fucked up. It's so gross. But it's always these fucking, it's always these chicks killing these dudes. Dude, be careful. Your girl might fucking kill you, man. Maybe. They always say, it's the spouse. It's the spouse. Husband and wife. Yeah, dude. She was a look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> she was hot. They always yeah. latch onto the hot, crazy, like, stabbed him, slit his throat, shot him in the head, everything. <sighs> she she went she went all out on him. Yeah. Well, that's why I fucking Lorena Bob. It was a, it was a great story. He was like a handsome dude. It was like a it was like whenever like if ugly people are killing each other, then it's not making the news. Yeah. It's just like they want hot people who are murderers. You're right. Yeah, they like hot psycho. A hot dude losing his dick sucks. That would have been put to work, that dick. If that... He got it back again. You know this? They sewed it back on this guy. And he, wonder... be- he became a porn star. Really? John Bobbitt, dude, did a porno after he got wow. his dick sewed on. Yeah. Like he was that happy about it. He was like, fuck it. Why? I mean, shit. <laughs> if you get it back, you're like, yeah, what I the hell? got it back. This is house money I'm playing with. What the hell? I couldn't help but think when she did that. When, when she cut that dude's dick off and threw it out a window in a field, or she told the cop she threw it into a field, you know? I, my instinct immediately was like, I, I, I bet it was a big dick. Like, I just, you could just, you just knew. You're yeah. not going to cut off a small guy's dick. Your husband, your husband that you hate, he's got yeah, a small, the small dick. small dick is the punishment. You're not cutting it off. No, you, it's like, it's not enough to cut. He had Damn. to have a pipe, I bet, and she was like, you don't get this anymore. Wow. You don't get to have fun with this, <laughs> with this Coke can, you know? My friend Tom McCaffrey used to have a great bit about the cops asked him what it looked like, and he's like, he's like, I just if you find a dick, just get it to me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna be picky. You guys finding a lot of dicks out there in fields these days? He's like, well, listen, dude, it's Jersey. We find dicks, <laughs> dude. That story, fuck, that was crazy. I remember I saw, I was a little kid when that story came out. I remember seeing him on the news smiling, and I remember asking my mom. If she if she cut his penis off, why is she smiling? Why is yeah. he smiling? I was a kid and I knew how fucked up that was. And my mom just said, "Well, you know, you find other things in life." And I was like, "That's as a kid, the darkest <laughs> shit you can hear. You find other That's things." That's so twisted. Yeah. Oh no, 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 you don't, mom. No, you don't. no, you don't. That's the beginning of the end. You cut off my penis, even if you stitch it back on, it's over for me. 
I think that's so. That's crazy that it, like he got he it, it worked again. The dick's a what a fucking magic dude. What an organ. Got that magic dick, dude. That's incredible. Let's cut off our dicks right now and see if they work again. <laughs> I'm too regular to cut my dick off. <laughs> that's, that's it. Guys, if you have a regular or small penis, you're, you're, she's not going to cut it off. If you have a big penis, that's the pun. That Damn. would be the punishment. I didn't think about that. That was the, that was the issue. That was when I, I was thinking about it. I was like, and that's like, clearly it was a nice dick because if it was whack, you would, you wouldn't go through the trouble to cut it off. Damn. She would leave him with his small penis. You know what I mean? She'd just it's also that oh, she'd cut off a finger or something. Yeah, like do, or leave a scar. You know what I mean? Like do something that he, that, you but know he was mean? a good looking guy. He was handsome. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that a little. I didn't know he did porno though. That's fucking. He weird. did a porno. He did like I, I don't know what it was called. Stitched. I don't even know what it was called. I have to look right now. I Who wanna... hasn't done a porno these days? That's <laughs> <laughs> fucking John anyway. Bobbitt. Here, John Bobbitt porn. Damn. Here, let's see what it was called. Uh, oh, you could. Here you go. Fine, we can briefly talk about John Wayne Bobbitt's porn career. See, it was there was somebody was talking wow. about it again. Yeah. Uh, uncut. What? It was called Uncut. <laughs> uncut Gems. <laughs> what about, uh, what about, what is she doing now? Lorena? Yeah. She might run for governor, I think, of, some, of New York. I think she's, <laughs> I think she's next on your list. Fuck, she's better than Cuomo. No fucking shit, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They kept, I joked about it. They kept in, uh, they kept in our goofball. I mean, they're all goof, these people are all goofballs, man. It's so funny. It's Cuomo like, is pretty villainous, though. I mean, like. Yeah, nobody likes him. It's funny they both kind of Cuomo and uh, fuck what's your guy's name Newsom. They both yeah. kind of look like Batman villains a little bit, right? But you know what it is too. There's another thing, handsome. Like he's a handsome dude. I think they like that he's a handsome villain. Cuomo or Newsom. Newsom is a handsome fucking yeah. dude. But if he was, if he, if the he slicked was, back hair. Yeah, man. If he was ugly, he'd be fucking gone. He went and ate dinner at French Laundry in the middle of COVID, and we everyone was mad at him, and now yeah. no everyone forgave him. And you're like, if he was ugly, <laughs> gone, yeah. dude. They'll fucking they'll get you. Cuomo was. A real prick. I mean, it, it, it is weird that, I mean. Is his brother an, it, still on CNN? He is. He got like a Me Too thing too, but then it was kind of like, it was weird. It was like from a former boss. So I'm like, well, is, then there, is there then a power dynamic? But it was like, yeah. I think the story was it was like on his last day. He's like, oh, I guess I can, I grab your butt now. And he did in front of her husband. I was like. You're a fucking idiot. Like, That's what are you? What is wrong thing, with you? Yeah. Um, it, it made no sense. And then she kind of, she didn't even, she kind of wrote a cool thing where she was like, I'm not saying, I don't think you should fire him. She was like, I'm just telling. So it was like one of the things where she was like, I don't think he should be fired. I think he should use this for good. Cause he was like aiding his brother too. That was the other thing. Mm. But then also it's his brother. Like, what are you going to, like, isn't it almost worse if you're not kind of guiding yeah. him? You're going down swinging with your brother. You don't have a choice. It's, you're just, you, you got the last name. You got the fucking, clearly you got, there's some sort of gene that you guys have. Yeah. They're but, one uh, and the same. But, uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, Governor Cuomo was, he fought like a year. He fought it. <laughs> And he got a book deal. It was like a fucking crazy <laughs> thing. Like, it, there were times where I was like, you got that, like, rocky Italian shit where you're like, I'm not going down. I'm like, yeah, but that was for, like, a boxing match. This is, you, you've yeah. done bad shit. No, but it worked for some reason for that guy. He, like, somehow was able to skate through some shit. You know why it worked? He, he used, uh, they, we sacrificed Al Franken to give him <sighs> life. Like, Al Franken was kind of wrongly fucked, I think. And then Cuomo kind of got, like, once a guy, it's almost like a makeup call in a sports game. Yeah. Oh, you, that's what it was. You know huh? what I mean? We're yeah. like, Franken kind of got fucked. It was on a. It was like a comedy tour, right? On a military uh, USO tour or some shit. Yeah, and it was like picture of him. It was bullshit. It was a it picture was, of him, like a girl was sleeping, and he was like, he was like doing the. Uh, he's like, it was like a shitty broy joke. But he was, really, but he wasn't touching her. No, that's insane. So he did like a, it's like me doing like uh, yeah. that in a photo. Yeah, and that's it. That's so. As fucked. far as I know, I mean, I. But then also, yeah, we, nobody, we weren't there. If we weren't there, but like then you know, Franken was like, "I'm out, fuck this shit." And then you get a guy like Cuomo who's just like, "Well, well fuck you." I'm, I, I'm shoot again. That's yeah. Cuomo. <laughs> shoot again. <laughs> you're like, "Holy shit, this guy!" Yeah. <laughs> well, he really had that like that confidence where you're just like, "This is insane to just show up." Like you grow up like twelve members of your staff, and you're showing up like, "All right, what's on the agenda today?" You're like, "You didn't hear? You didn't hear what the agenda?" Is? <laughs> Sir, read the paper in front of me. We've left the item of what's going on right now it was it was a bad well they're all uh, scumbags i'll say that dude i've said that before i yeah. think fucking i think democrats and republicans alike dude all these guys all these men and women and all these positions are just boners they're scumbags they're up to no good i think altruism is fucking dead i don't think any of them do it for fucking yeah for for a true-hearted purpose i don't buy it i don't i just don't buy it 
I never, I, when I was a kid, I maybe bought into it a little bit and then I've gotten older and yes, I'm a cynic. And they're I, just they're just people, and they're people who have done bad things, and they have to pretend they haven't. Even if they haven't done bad things, they're in there for strictly for business and growth and power. There's no other sure. reason to do it. That I don't believe. I Pub, don't believe the, it. The word public servant is an insult. Yeah, it's yeah. an insult. It is. It is. It is. Servant. You're it's a servant. Like, you're, you are you're the... a servant to us? <laughs> is that why you won't go away? I don't remember uh, Jeffrey from the Fresh Prince being like. No, you can't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> I live here now. <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, you do have to leave. He's like, no. He was yeah. kind of indignant, by the way. That was interesting you say that, that was, because that was kind of part of his character. That was, yeah. And that was why he was so fucking good. But, shout out shout out to Fresh Prince lovers out there. Oh, that was a great show. But yeah, no, Cuomo really was a prick. I mean, like, it was hilarious. You even see the pictures of him, like, with his do- even his dog in the pictures, like, trying to get away from him. He's like, <laughs> he is poison right now. <laughs> even his dog is like, eh, I don't like the way you pet me, you know? Uh, don't take a photo. Don't, don't, don't put me in the photo. I don't want to be in the photo. <laughs> this is kind of a bad look for me now. You know? get, I mean, you know, honestly, it's like, they'll all, uh, it'll all, this is what happens. They'll, he'll go away and we'll all forget all about it. We'll move on. Yeah, be and, all, it's like, and there will be a path like I hate this term because it's like a blogger term, but there'll be a path for him to come back. There'll be some path to redemption sure. in like five years. He'll have a fucking CNN show or something. Yeah. Elliot Spitzer did. Yeah. Dude, we love redemption. We love redemption stories. It's an all-American thing. We love it in sports. Sure. It infiltrates our society. We love it so much. Robert Downey Jr. was a crazy drug addict Yeah. who was like smacking a hooker around in New Mexico or some shit. It's like, that's Iron Man. That's Disney's Iron Man. Yeah. Like, we like this, can he come back again? You're like, yeah. Well, we like bringing people down, so we may as well like bringing them back up. That is so fucking true. That's the sickness, is like, we like ruining people, so we have to like bring, Bring otherwise we would all be monsters. You have to have forgiveness. What's the the word? Schadenfreude. Yeah. Schadenfreude, right? Yeah, we like, what it yeah, is? yeah, we like seeing people Yeah, yeah, you get off on suffer, watching yeah. other people's suffrage. Yeah. That's great. Shocker that that's a German word. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And so there is no translation for any other language. So like, no, it's just a German just word. Just German. We don't We're have just, that in anybody yeah. else. That is so funny. Those guys, man. What's the deal with the Nazis? No. <laughs> that was like old Norm stuff when Norm used to do that. These Nazis, man, they're, they're jerks. Yeah. <laughs> Real jerks, these guys. He was so good at small, wasn't even like the depth of the some of the writing I love wasn't. Did you know Norm well being an LA guy? No, I mean you know I. But you must have known him. Yeah, met met him, but I you know I he was very uh, his own. You know what I mean? Kind of his own guy. He you know a- Adam Egan, who was the manager of the store, was very 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 close yeah. to Norm. Oh, I I don't know Adam super well, and I sent him an I'm, I'm sorry text. Yeah, he yeah that was it was a bummer, man. But also you know the greatest joke I've seen on the internet about Norm was a clip of Norm talking about Hitler. And this is amazing how they've lined this up. It's Norm going, Hitler, uh, Hitler. Ugh. And then Adam, it's on his old show, and Adam was like, what, what, Hitler, what? And he's like, this guy is a piece of shit. Huh? Like, uh, how, come somebody doesn't, how come somebody doesn't fucking kill him already? And he goes, he's been dead for like 50 years. And, he, and Norm goes, what? I didn't even know he was sick. <laughs> and then there is a literal, like, clip, 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 clip ensuing of all of these people going, yeah, Norm, fuck, I didn't even know he was sick. Uh, Dude, it's almost like the craziest, most brilliant Norm joke. Wow. It was Burr. It was all these famous comics on podcasts and everything being like, I love the guy. I'm so Which, sad. Which, by the not- way, can you imagine... <laughs> Can you imagine not telling someone you had cancer for nine years? It's kind of wild. That's what what's I opened too. with. I have diarrhea in St. Louis last weekend. <laughs> I think I'm gonna let him tip him off about the yeah. cancer. Sorry, I was late. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, Chadwick Boseman did the same thing. You know, the actor that died of uh, he had oh, cancer too. He didn't, was great. Didn't tell anybody. He was like a real artist too. Like he would have been like another like. He would have been like, I mean, he really was a legend, but like I was gonna say, like Denzel's st- status. He you know would what have mean? been, he would have been that type of dude, but almost more of like a chameleon than Denzel. Like he could kind of yeah. like do kind of weirder. Denzel is so great, but he's not do. And Denzel kind of hit a point after Training Day where he's like, I'm just gonna say my man for every character. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, and by the way, love it. It's great. <laughs> Training Day is a great movie. Great movie, man. And, and I love Denzel. I love Inside Man. I love all his recent stuff too. But like. You know, Chadwick Boseman was a different type of dude, almost. Like, yeah, he was. He was. I love that guy. Yeah, he was phenomenal. I, I do get. I do get the idea of keeping your sickness private. Totally, but maybe it's, it's no, maybe it's nobody's business. It's nobody's business. Business, but I think it, it just speaks to like what a kind of whiny culture we've become. Mm. 
where like everyone shares fucking everything now. Yeah. So to keep cancer private is, is crazy. Yeah. Do you have any secrets you want to tell me on the show? I'll tell you off air. It's about a prostitute. <laughs> no. Okay. I, no, I got nothing. I got no good secret. I'm a boring motherfucker. Like yeah. I'm on the road every weekend. I don't have a life, dude. Yeah, I know. You're I ho- don't, hotel show, hotel show, hotel, hotel show. I have no life. And it, you go with somebody or no? I bring Gary Veter a lot. I bring uh, Dina Hashem a good amount. Uh, the, I don't know her. I know the name, but I don't know her well. Dina's really funny. Gary, Gary's my boy. We did a shitty gig in Vegas. He asked He's him told about me. That he fight. told oh, me yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, fucking no. nightmare. Gary dude. is Gary. I've known for so long. I love that. Sometimes dude. I bring Anthony DeVito. I, I I just need a friend with me. Well, we all do. I mean, it's fucking. It's it's, dude, it's, it's lonely. It's, it's, it's really sad. Like there were nights at the beginning where you're like. I don't know if I can do this for the rest of my for life. Sure. Like this is really. I you don't need, give a you fuck. need a friend and a killer act in front. That's those are my only requirements. You got to be my friend, and you got to. Ki- I want the show to be awesome. From from, I want the crowd to love whoever I bring. I have three rules. Yeah, you have to be. You know, you have. To, we have to obviously get along. You have to be great at comedy, and you have to want to have fun during the day. Like you yeah. have to want to do because. Do are you a day activity guy? Yeah, I want to go do something. I want to yeah. go do. I'm in the city. I'm. I'm not going to waste my whole day in a city just to do a show at night, just to go home, because I'm like, I flew all the way the fuck here. This is yeah. still my life. Yeah, yeah, I need yeah. to do something. I don't, like... I, it, I do it, something, know. but it's usually, like, like we got we got barbecue. Of course, they, could, like, they, I, they gave us a look, like, we ordered coffee with our barbecue, and they gave us a look, like, we're like, you have coffee? They're like, I think. They're like, we don't... <laughs> it was basically them saying, we don't get a lot of Jews around here <laughs> to order coffee and seltzer with their barbecue. You guys are uh, the, the people who killed Jesus, right? <laughs> we don't get your kind around here too much. No, but it is funny. that You that, need an that, activity. You yeah, need something I need during it. the day. To, to make the gig go... Even, and also to get a maybe a bit to do something, but maybe... A slice to, of the culture. To keep your brain going. Yeah, I want to feel the culture a little yeah. bit. I want to know what the town... Like, O'Connor, who goes with me a lot, Chris O'Connor, who lives with Gillis, you know, he's a, him and Shane are re- old friends. Um, and we'll go to like museums and shit too, uh, just because it's like museums great. It's it's a great day. way to be like, oh, let's go not be dipshits in a bar for four hours. Yeah, we can do that later and watch sports, but also let's go somewhere somewhat culturally, you know, important, so we can yeah. feel something instead of like hop in a plane, go to a hotel, eat, drink at Buffalo fucking Wild Wings, do sets, go home, do it again. It's just. I don't know. You I need you need something. I'm with you, man. I I'm so sick of like I've done it too much where you're like first off it's so easy to just jack off too much on the road cuz yeah, you're like in a room you're doing. and you're kind of like I don't want to do this anymore. I've done this for years. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be this you're guy miserable. anymore. It's, yeah, you're miserable and it's just like you're just doing it to like pass the time. Right. And you're like, we could pass the time in a way that doesn't make me feel sad. (laughs) (laughs) And whatever created us, whatever thing created us, whatever being you believed in, whatever science you like or believe in or person or whatever, they just had to make us sad the moment you come. That was a requirement. They're like, the moment it gets out, you're going to be fucking depressed as fuck. Post not clarity, man. You get that. You look at your life. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, this is miserable. And I have this shit all over me now. It's like reality hits you in a way. You're like, you're in like a La Quinta alone. And you're like, ugh. (laughs) Oh my God. And I've I've spilled on myself. It's so weird. I've (laughs) spilled on myself. Do you do it on yourself? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I get so much shit because I said once on our podcast uh, with Mark that I, that I would, I usually do it into my hand. What? Yeah. You hold your other hand out? Yeah, yeah. And I just do it in there and I, I, and I clean my hand out because I, I, I was, I was, it was my way of going green and, and I got so much shit for that. People will scream it out during the road. Funny. And then there's people at the show that don't know what they're talking about. So they're just like, what the fuck? Like, you your jerk hand? off in your hand. I'm just like, this ain't helping the show. But by the way, do you catch all of it? Sometimes. I'm very, I don't, I, I'm very dehydrated. You don't, you don't miss, huh? You don't <laughs> miss. My boy don't I'm, miss. I'm, <laughs> Sam is perfect. From, hey, from six feet in, I'm Sam like, is perfect. I'm Kurt Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> a great mid-range. <laughs> per- it's no, perfect. No, I, uh, you know what it is? I, uh... I just am so dehydrated that it's all the Nothing's time. Nothing's coming out? No, it's like, it's so, it's, uh, my, my flow is so whatever. It's like, uh, it's coffee. It's like six coffees a day. You're just kind of like, yeah, it was mostly dust anyway. Who gives a shit, yeah. you know? I had an old joke about that where I said, um, um, to when I watch porn stars and, and the way they're able to shoot, it's, it's like uh. they have CO2 in their balls. I was like, I'm lucky if mine comes out. Yeah, and when yeah. it does, it's like late to the party. Oh, you know my, what I mean? my jizz used to like be an Avenger. Now, now it hobbles out like a musician on his farewell tour or some shit. It's depressing as hell. Hello, St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Three people. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, depressing. We love Bob Skaggs. <laughs> Whatever the yeah, fuck it yeah. is. All right, well, you're on the road now. 
Uh, yeah. and, and get Sam out of his hotel room. Don't let him sit in there and jerk off. Take him out and have fun with him. Please. Come out and see the guy. Go to what? What's your website? Samarell.com slash shows. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere, man. Go watch the guy. We're, we're, what's coming up in the next couple of months? Uh, I'm going to be... When does this come out? <laughs> in a week. I'll be Chicago, Denver, Phoenix, San Francisco, New York. Damn. Uh, Dallas, Buffalo. You're uh, everywhere. Richmond, Virginia, Baltimore, everywhere, and uh, and watch my new doc, Full Capacity, on YouTube. Oh yeah, it's we fun. didn't even fucking talk it's, about the it's fucking It's a good doc. time. It, it's 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 fun. It's every, every, all these New York comics when you got da- uh, Colin Quinn in there, David Tell, Taylor's in it, Ray Romano, awesome, uh, Ronnie Chang, Norman, Ari, all, so many fun people are in it. Good. So Go, only, Sam J, only, Chris Red. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I lo- yeah. love Sam J. Yeah, yeah. And Chris, Chicago it's on boy. my YouTube, full capacity. You'll love go it. to go to his YouTube, and you can also watch his other specials that are on there that he did himself, that he paid for, like we talked about. Okay, the I love man it. didn't pay I'm, for it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it that way. I think for the foreseeable future. Yeah, why not? It works. Yeah, fucking a, it works. Go see the documentary. Go watch his specials. Go see him on tour. Look in that camera right there. And uh, this one here. One, one word or one phrase to end the episode. One word or one phrase. The Carlton. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are pugils. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no.